redemption. Fingertips away from his first world championship. Oh! Matt Hardy may be stronger than death, but tonight he couldn't overcome EC3. Courage. From humble beginnings in Tijuana, Mexico, Tigre Uno is X Division champion. Retribution. The so-called greatest wrestler in the world, Kurt Angle. He's not here because of me. Infamy. I was the very first Knockouts champion, and I intend to stay Knockouts champion. This match at Bound for Glory is about our legacy. Who truly is the best? Immortality. The unbendable, unbreakable, unbeatable, undisputed, undefeated world heavyweight champion here, now, and forever! Have the Wolves met their match in Lee and Myers? I'm the King of the Mountain champion now. For Bobby Roode, does his kryptonite come in the form of the Destroyer? And tonight, they are bound for glory. What started in October of 2005 continues tonight as the greatest wrestling roster ever assembled takes center stage. Live from Charlotte, North Carolina, TNA proudly presents Bound for Glory 2015. And from our inside, Josh Matthews, alongside the Pope for the next three hours. A lot going on tonight, partner. Yeah, there we are right now in the midst of something big, something huge, something great, something glorious. It's Bound for Glory. Every championship will be defended tonight, including in our opening contest. With that said, let's head inside the ring to Christy Hemi. The following contest is an ultimate X match for the X Division Championship. Introducing first from a visa, BJZ. BJZ is a former X Division Champion, has a tremendous opportunity here tonight in Ultimate X. The match that put TNA on the map, and these incredible athletes will have the opportunity to get high above the ring to where the championship hangs, pull it down and leave as X Division champion. And his opponent, this is Manic. Manic is a two-time X Division champion. Since departing from James Storm's revolution, and it going through a bit of an identity crisis, partner. Well, you just said it correctly. Hits his name, Manic. He's all over the place. That doesn't include He's just being in the ring, but inside of the man's head. Inside of his head, Doc. We'll see if Manic can leave here tonight. A three-time X Division champion. Great way to start. Bound for glory. And their opponent from Burlington, North Carolina, Andrew Everett! This is what you have to love about TNA. An opportunity here for Andrew Everett, the 23-year-old from right down the road. How many butterflies are in his stomach right now? Can you imagine how many butterflies are in the stomach right now? But this is his first time, it's Ultimate X. Imagine the butterflies when he has to scale up that. Right there, daddy. And their opponent from Tijuana, Mexico, your X Division champion, Tigre Uno. It was on June 24th that Tigre Uno became the X Division champion. In my opinion, Tigre Uno embodies what it means to be an X Division superstar. There are no limits. And here we go, fast and furious start to Ultimate X. Uno has definitely been quite the representative, if you will, of Impact Wrestling, of TNA, of the X Division. There's no better right now than Tigre Uno. The first ever X Division champion, the phenomenal AJ Styles. 
Austin Aries is the longest reigning X Division champion in company history at 301 days. Chris Sabin's held the title more times than anyone at eight. And How we'll see is that? T. Gray Uno can retain his title here tonight. Andrew Everett started competing when he was just 14 years old. Oh! His family's in the professional wrestling business. It's in his blood, it's in his DNA. But Andrew Everett's never been in the ring with the likes of T. Gray Uno. T. Gray Uno, Manic, TJZ. Hey, we're talking about all former X Division champions. And now here's Manic, waist lock on T. Gray Uno, who lands on his feet. Don't blink, folks, you might miss something spectacular here in this matchup. T. Gray Uno, tilt to whirl into Manic. Body's twisted all over the six-sided ring. Look like T. Gray hit a version of the belt of the belt oh. suplex. Made famous by Bagman T.A. there. Opportunity here to get a look there. As you saw, the X Division Championship hanging high above the ring. It is suspended. What you have to do is anything you can to get up there, to get up on the cables and secure the X Division Championship. T. Gray Uno takes out both Andrew Everett and Manic. Action spilling out right in front of us. Uno is just kicking on all cylinders right now. DJ just almost decapitated him with that clothesline. Raucous crowd here in Charlotte to get us started on Bound for Glory. You know that DJC would love to have the X Division Championship. So Andrew Everett goes off the ultimate X structure right out here in front of us. Ooh! Manic right now, just feeling it. One thing about these competitors, you know, I, I look at Manic in specific, just look how he's, how he's walking around, look how he's moving, look at his facial expression now that he has the mask off, Josh. And T. Gray Uno lands on his feet here. How important is it, Pope, to set the pace in Ultimate X? Well, number one, it's very important to set the pace. Why? Because, again, there's no limits in pace. It really doesn't matter except to the fact that you want to outmaneuver, outpace, just like that T. Gray Uno with the kick. You just want to get on top of your competition early and quick. DJZ trying to take advantage. Trying to get back in the ring here with T. Gray Uno. That's an interesting way to get back in, and DJZ oh! quickly back out. Just like that, DJZ took to the sky. It's all for the X Division Championship. T. Gray Uno in the ring by himself. He didn't look for the title, though. He wants to take flight. Uno with the court screw over the top rope. This is what I'm talking about. It's not really about the pace because the pace is always going to be fast. It's always going to be furious. Right now, you want to get your opponent down. You want to keep him out, and you want to scale that structure to get that title. And Andrew Everett, he wants to show off some offense of his own here. Springboard shooting star press. <laughs> The question is not when, the question is not what, it's just what are they going to do next, Josh? What are they going to do next? Andrew Everett may go on to become the X Division Champion on his debut here in TNA. He's almost there. Right behind Everett is Manic. Smart move by Manic to just kick his opponent down. Nice standing vertical souffle by Manic into the back souffle. Shades of Elijah Park! And it's Manic in control now. I've always liked that kid, that kid being Manic. Something about him. He studies, he watches tapes. And Manic can't connect there to T. Gray Uno. DJ Z hooks the ankle, and T. Gray Uno's down. Now it's DJ Z's turn. PDT thrown off by T. Gray Uno. Back and forth they go. And oh! Sit out, face buster. Hey, I don't know what just happened there, but uh, DJ Z and Manic just pulled off a tag team maneuver together. I don't know if that was coincidental or what. And now it's DJ Z and the maskless Manic making their way to the center of the ring. No one's gotten closer to the X Division Championship than these two. Manic down, can DJ Z secure the championship? Oh. You know, partner, oh, oh, man. where did Andrew 
Bradford come from? I don't know, but like you said earlier, if you blink, you're going to mix up. Oh, oh, DJC turns over an inside out. No time to celebrate. Here comes Team Rayuno. Nice variation of the starter there. That's, <laughs> the crowd is just loving this. I'm loving it. And we're just getting started here at Bound for Glory. These men all vying for the prestigious X Division Championship, a title that's been held by the likes of Eric Young, Brian Kendrick, Samoa Joe, the man currently exiled in the UK, Rockstar Spud, has held the championship twice. And TJ Uno, his path gets cut down by Manic. Awesome Andrew Henry, how many revolutions was that? I don't know, but I like it, and I call for more, more, more. Everett and Tigre Uno. Both trying to make their way up here. I better calm down, because if I keep this up, I'm not going to have a voice for the main event. This is, this is crazy. I don't know how you can calm down with the action flying around the ring the way it has been as DJZ puts a stop there to the offense of Tigre Uno. You know, Anytime Tigre has gotten something going, it's been DJZ there to stop him. Ab absolutely, and, and that might be a little bit of personal history there between the two. They faced off a couple of times. But I want the audience at home, I want the people to understand that this is not monkey bars. These are cables that hang above the ring, and you have no stability when you're trying to pull yourself across. So it's much harder supporting yourself with your own weight to get to that title that hangs in the center of that X. And you're trying to pull yourself across all the while you have other individuals trying to stop your progress. Yeah, man, and when, and when that rope started to shake, and it just make it worse. And that cable, as we see right now, Uno up there. Oh, Changes his mind. Tigre Uno calls an audible. And Tigre Uno! Oh, my goodness! Are you kidding me? Daddy, that's insane! Tigre Uno was finally sick. DJZ stopping him from winning Ultimate X. And this deserves another look. Deserves. I don't think we have to tell the truck that. Take a look at T. Gray Uno. He saw DJZ was starting to stir a little bit. Oh, oh my goodness. Pardon, that's off of the top rope. The referee's checking on Uno. Hell, he needs to be checking on DJZ. And he Andrew Everett. Andrew Everett now. He's. Innovating his way to the top here. DJ Z now in the middle. Who will get to the championship first? Will it be DJ Z or Andrew Everett? DJ Z's got a hand on it. Excuse me, Manic. And Manic is dropped. What a smart and clever way to get to that X Division title by the young Andrew Everett. Just and grab it, kid. Andrew Everett is still there in the center of the ring. Here comes the champion. Zip lining his way over is Tigre Uno. I think Everett got himself in the jam. He was trying to figure out how I'm going to reach down and grab it with the rope shaking. Well, and now, then Uno didn't make it any better. Well, now we'll see if Andrew Everett can kind of try to eliminate Tigre Uno or just grab the championship. Right. Tigre Uno, Andrew Everett, precarious situation oh! from the top of Ultimate X. Good God Almighty, this is insane. And Tigre Uno is going to retain his X Division Championship. What a match. Your winner and still X Division Champion, Tigre Uno. The action was all over the place. Bodies were flying all around the six sided ring. Andrew Everett spills from the top of Ultimate X. And in the end, Tigre Uno magnificently retains his X Division title. I don't think folks know how much of a risky matchup this is. This match is dangerous. The competitors are definitely wounded right now, Josh. As we take another look at the action, that was Andrew Everett. Talk about the grand stage to make your debut in TNA and Andrew Everett become a household name after tonight. The maskless manic all over the place. This is what the X Division is all about. Hats off to each and every competitor that put their bodies on the line.
not just for Impact Wrestling, but for the fans of Impact Wrestling around the world. They all deserve a standing ovation and a round of applause. This was just absolutely a great way to kick off Bound for Glory. Couldn't agree with you more as Tigre Uno. Probably trying to put the pieces together after that match. Like a car crash at 150 miles an hour. Hey, don't ask Pope. I was advertised for the Ultimate X five times. Well, maybe four. And that is a real one. That's, that's, that's Gregory Shane Helms. Well, you know, they've been talking about uh, hurricanes in the Carolina uh, area, so I don't know. Maybe that swept Gregory Helms in. Let's for see the what first happens. time in his storied and illustrious 25-year career, the longest reigning cruiserweight champion in the history of professional wrestling. Yeah. There he be. Is here at Bound for Glory. And he's wearing his trademark colors, which just so happens to be one of the major colors of the X Division and the title. What does this mean, Josh? I think you summed it up perfectly there. Oh, boy. Gregory Shane Helms. Just in a battle. Yeah. A vicious battle. Oh. He's going to hit him. He wants that title. All right, no. Great show of sportsmanship and class from Gregory Shane Helms. Oh, Again, no one held the Cruiserweight Championship longer than the man that just gave his support to Tigre Uno. Uh, I, I was just watching the odds, and I was under the impression that something was about to go down, but apparently not. Maybe the longest reigning Cruiserweight Champion in history of wrestling wanted to come out and just give the acknowledgement to our champion, our X Division Champion, Tigre Uno. Well, our main event tonight is for the TNA World Championship. And as you saw earlier today, EC3, the world champion with Tyrus, arriving here at Bound for Glory. EC3 will be defending his title tonight against two men. That man, Drew Galloway, the captain. He was able to survive and go on to become number one contender. And then Matt Hardy got in this past Wednesday night. Matt Hardy in the World Championship match as well. In Hardy country, can Matt Hardy, with Jeff Hardy as the special guest referee, become world champion? Are we all but guaranteed a new world champion here tonight at Bound for Glory? What is definitely shaping up. The cards have already been stacked against EC3, if you will. So whether or not we're going to have a new champion, that remains to be seen. But the probability is all there. Speaking of the World Heavyweight Champion. stand the TNA World Champion. A conquering hero in enemy territory. But the only thing I can think about, the only thing I can talk about, the only thing I can feel is the conspiracy. The conspiracy against me and my title reign. Now, I'm not talking about the next match to determine a new number one contender. What I'm talking about is tonight's main event. A main event that was supposed to be a singles match is now a triple threat match and a match my family, my flesh, my blood, my aunt, Dixie Carter, put Jeff Nero Hardy as a special guest referee. 
Oh. Oh, you love it. You love it, don't you? You love it. Well, it matters not because I will win tonight. I will not lose. Not here. Not now. Not next week. Next month. Next year. Not ever. My opponents tonight, Drew Galloway, stand up! You fight for wrestling. And Matt Hardy will not die. You fight for family. Tonight, your title aspirations, gentlemen, they will stand up and they will die because I am the unbendable, unbreakable, unbeatable, undisputed, undefeated world heavyweight champion and I fight for the greatest cause of all, me. <clears throat> Two years. Two years of perfection. Two years ago, I debuted on this day at Bound for Glory. You could say BFG is in my blood. But it's more than that because I'm not just Bound for Glory. I am beyond flow. Beyond greatness. We're in Charlotte, North Carolina, right? Woo. Trouble, 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 trouble. 714 days. That's how long EC3 has been undefeated. Since making his debut at Bound for Glory two years ago. EC3 seems very confident, even though he's up against two competitors tonight for the world title. Well, I mean, as a champion, as a champion, like, you know, the belt right there, you have, look, Paul, third commentator, you got to be confident, especially when your back is against the wall, daddy. So I don't blame EC3. Well, speaking of gold, it's now time for Bound for Gold. It's a gauntlet match. Here's how it works. It starts with two. You're eliminated when you're thrown over the top rope. Both feet touch the floor below at timed intervals. Someone else will join the fray. When we're down to the final two, it becomes a traditional one-on-one -on -one match that can be won by pinfall or submission. The winner earns a guaranteed future world title opportunity. What an opportunity that's going to be for one of those competitors. The full this is a Bound for Gold gauntlet match. Introducing first. This man, Mr. Anderson, is a former two-time TNA World Champion. I think he's a little uh, perplexed that his microphone didn't drop down. <laughs> well, you know, when you've respected something for so long. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, I hail from Green Bay, Wisconsin. And my name is Master. and his opponent.
from Hollywood, California, the man, Jesse Goddard. So essentially, this is a number one contenders bound for gold gauntlet match. And I got word during Mr. Anderson's entrance that there's an added wrinkle. When it gets down to the final two, yes, it does become a traditional match that can be won by pinfall or submission. It can also be won by throwing your opponent over the top rope and both feet must touch the floor. So a different way to win. Oh, well, and obviously not just a different way, but more opportunities. And some may find that as an easier uh, alternative than pinning or submitting your opponent. But I can guarantee you the modern day Adonis, he wouldn't care. He'd probably prefer to submit his opponent. You've been singing the praises of Jesse Goddard for months now. I know you're a big fan of the upside of Jesse. That's because I'm a winner and I know how to pick winners. You need to hop on board, Josh. Jesse Goddard can certainly have a bright future here, especially if he wins bound for gold, this gauntlet style matchup. But he's in the ring right now with the man who I mentioned, two time TNA world champion. You know that Mr. Anderson has kind of just been you know, floating yep, along yep. a little bit here over the last couple of months. He would love an opportunity to be right back in the world title picture. Oh, oh man, you're stirring up a pot of worms right now because there's so many Ooh. back there in that oh. locker room, so many wrestlers around the world that will love that opportunity. Not just Mr. Anderson, but you gotta know he wants it just a little bit more. Anderson knows what it takes to compete on the grand stage. Competing here tonight at Bound for Glory, and Jesse Goddard is in retreat mode here early. Anderson, you know, you know, Pope was a little surprised when Anderson, uh, you know, did not do his double take of his name because that takes a lot of breath out of him, and uh, he, he wants to last during this. So maybe he thought twice and he let the audience the fans of Impact Wrestling finish it. So as we take a look here at Jesse Goddard and Mr. Anderson, they know that they're going to have to go whoa, 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 whoa. Look at this Jesse Goddard's. This is, come on, John, you can't get past that. Jesse Goddard just pressed Mr. Anderson 230 plus pounds above his head and dropped him like a sack of potatoes. Well, Jesse Goddard is certainly impressed by himself. Handshake time. Interesting tactic being implemented here by Mr. Anderson. He's impressed by Jesse Goddard's strength and power. And the old KG veteran Anderson. Oh, Jesse was prepared. <laughs> Anderson was prepared as well. Big clothesline there, and Mr. Anderson goes to work. I back elbow, and Anderson in control here of Jesse Goddard's. Experience factor. Ten, nine. Get it twisted. His name life. is Eli Drake, and he is, well, people love to hate Eli Drake. Are you kidding? You know, I don't know about you, partner, but I saw him backstage earlier walking around with his gallon of water, all secluded to himself. And, and he, he made a point to tell Pope, hey, Josh calls me Eli Drake, but I know you'll do me justice. I am the new prince of Eternia, Eli Drake. He just wanted me to tell you that. Well, I saw Eli Drake earlier, and he sort of looked at me and said, I don't like what you say about me on commentary. I'm not a fan of it. I, you talk about how people don't like me, and I said, well, people don't like you. And he laughed and walked away. Well, that's and Eli Drake. That's Eli Drake. Said that Jesse Goddard is confident. Eli Drake may be the next step there. He's arrogant, he's cocky, but he's brash, and he can back it up inside the ring as well. And that's a very good point. And, and one thing about Eli Drake that I like personally is the fact that the man thinks. You may not dig it, you may not feel the way he goes by as, as his standards are, but he, he makes it happen. And it was Eli Drake and Jesse Goddard working together as we're just a couple seconds away here from the fourth participant in the Bound for Gold match. Your next competitor, Al Snow! The legendary Al Snow with head! And apparently nobody wants Al Snow's head! How unpredictable is this? Al Snow! And if he wins the 
this match, Al Snow will be number one contender for the World Championship. But look how great Al Snow looks. And the fans have just erupted. Al Snow's had titles all over the world. He's never been world champion. And what a great opportunity. What a great moment this will be for Al Snow to win this gauntlet match, this, this Bound for Gold opportunity. Hashtag Bound for Glory is trending worldwide right now via Twitter. We invite all of you to follow along tonight at Impact Wrestling. And of course, follow our president, Dixie uh -oh. Carter at TNA Dixie. This is classic Al Snow. No one's been eliminated from the gauntlet yet. And Eli Drake, nice neck breaker there. Eli Drake and Jesse Goddard, who were working together earlier to try to eliminate Mr. Anderson. You can't trust anybody in the gauntlet. Oh, God. Anderson with a nice standing drop kick. Caught him right in the mush maker. That's a pole pistol. And now Al Snow back to his feet. Anderson and Al Snow taking it to Jesse Goddard. And Eli Drake. Another competitor making his debut here tonight at Bound for Glory, Aiden O'Shea. From what I understand, he's a brawler. Yeah, not just a brawler, man. Uh, Aiden O'Shea, he's, he's rugged, he's aggressive, he's like, as you said, he's like a barroom brawler from the south side of Chicago, Irish descent. And if there's one thing that I know about this young man, it's you gotta watch out. There it is, for, for those fists, man. Watch out for him. How do you grade the punches? Not bad. Oh! Especially that last right hand. But if you notice, as he was on his way to the ring, he was taping his fist. Aiden O'Shea, a brawler, might work out well in a gauntlet-style match. Yeah, yeah, hey, it worked well for Stan wow. Hansen. It worked well for people like Terry Gordy, guys that have influenced Aiden O'Shea. And he goes back to the, the quick short right jab, left jab. Aiden O'Shea has Eli Drake rocking and rolling here. Imagine coming into Bound for Glory and leaving as the number one contender for the world championship. Been there, Josh. Pope has been number one contender on numerous occasions, and I gotta tell you, it's an amazing thing. You wanna go on. Your next competitor, Robbie. Here's a guy, Robbie E, that has just been waiting for opportunities waiting for his chance to shine. It comes here tonight at Bound for Glory and Bound for Gold. Can Robbie E make the most of this opportunity? Well, you know, as of late, Robbie E with the attitude change, the aggression that he's added to his Ooh. arsenal, just the go-getter mentality, he has really upped the ante for himself. So he wants to come out on top of this. A fist bump from Robbie E and Al Snow. And there's another one. Oh! Talked about caging veterans earlier. Well, I mean, come on, you can't trust Al Snow. I once went out to dinner with him. He asked me to pay for it, you know, till we got back to the car, and he never gave me a dime. I wonder if we'll see Robbie E mix it up here with Jesse Goddard's one-time tag team champions, the Bromans together. You know what, that may be wise of them, just to maybe work together. There's no one in there that has more tag team experience than those two. I don't think they can put their differences aside as Al Snow uses his head to eliminate Eli Drake. That's our first elimination here in the Bound for Gold Gauntlet match. Oh. Your next competitor, Mahabali. 
And Shira's on the outside with Eli Drake. Eli Drake's been eliminated. Eli Drake needs to hit the showers. This is an opportunity here for Mahavali Shira. Shira now, unsure which one he wants to club her down first, but eventually he's he got it going. Shira may take out everybody. He may, there's only one man left. Yep, and he went down. And Andrew Shea goes down. goes down. Oh no. Oh. And Shira wants to dance. Uh, uh, oh. Oh, okay, I can't talk. There's that dance. It's the dance craze that's been trending worldwide since Shira started it. Hashtag Shira Shake. And now he has everybody doing it. You There's think people standing up in, out here? <laughs> Everyone's doing it. You think that Aiden knows Shay? And yep, there answers my question. Oh, goodness. Hey, sit down. Stop doing that. Oh, it ain't no Shay. See, that's the kind of guy that ain't no Shay is. Everyone's having a good time. Everyone's dancing with Shira. Yeah, and, and, and speaking of barroom, I think I'm going to give Aiden O'Shea a tip for stopping that. So Shira down. Thanks to Aiden O'Shea. And Mr. Anderson trying to eliminate Jesse Goddard. And there goes Aiden O'Shea. So Shira eliminates Aiden O'Shea. You know, actually, this is just a great opportunity for Shira. You know, someone, he's a very humble guy. You talk to him, I talk to him. But what happened here? It's time for our next, Your next competitor, Tyrus. Tyrus is the bodyguard for the world champion, EC3. Well, thank God he removed that towel for a second. I thought I was having a flashback to my former days. And Tyrus, similar to the way Shira did, comes in and starts taking out everybody. There goes Robbie E. Thank God Tyrus wasn't wearing orange. We can hear about that. And there goes Al Snow. And there goes Mr. Anderson, who was the first competitor in the Bound for Gold gauntlet match. Tyrus, most powerful. He's got the most mass. He's going to be difficult to eliminate. Um, who's going to get the big man Tyrus, the man dinosaur? over the top rope. If anybody has any good sense in there, exclude Al Snow, of course. I think we all come together and try to get the big man out first and foremost and right now. Tyrus came into this match with an attitude. He came in ready. He came in looking to maul people. And Robbie E may not have enough fight in him here to slow down Tyrus. Gotta keep your head out of swivel in a match like this, but Tyrus is just relying on the power game. Oh. Your next competitor, Chris Melendez. The Sarge, Chris Melendez. I give so much credit to this young man, Chris Melendez, for following his dream, becoming a professional wrestler. Chris Melendez had his sights set on defeating Eric Young. He was obsessed with it. And finally, Chris Melendez was able to do just that. And Melendez able to move on in his career and now perhaps to become number one contender for the world championship. When you, oh, I, he just hit tires with the comeback boot. Robbie E swings and misses. Full Nelson slam. As you were saying, man, uh, Melendez, this is a guy that's never quit. I, I, he, he doesn't know how to give up. He's good friends with Mr. Anderson, but Mr. Anderson knows what's at stake here. Melendez might have saw that coming, and he drops Anderson. With that combat boot special. Oh, wow. That was one arm. Yeah. Tremendous strike there by Tyrus, and Melendez was able to hang on. Al Snow, not so lucky. Al Snow has been eliminated. And now Chris Melendez. Chris Melendez has been eliminated. Tyrus with two ICUs. 
I see you, Daddy. Tyrus just took out Melendez and Al Snow with the I see you spike. Tyrus is a monster. I don't think that Tyrus is going to dance. Oh. Nobody can make Tyrus Shira dance. Has been eliminated. So Shira's out. Yeah, he danced all right. Danced him right out of the ring. Him being your next competitor, oh, Tommy Dreamer. Who else is back there? It's Bound for Glory. There's always going to be surprises. Elements of surprise. You call it. It's going to be right here at Bound for Glory. But look at Dreamer. Look what he's wearing, Daddy. He has on the polka dots. Shades of the legendary American Dream, Dusty Rose. Do I dream? I'm with you, Daddy. I'm with you. Paying homage to the late, great Dusty Rhodes is Tommy Dreamer here tonight at Bound for Glory and the innovator of violence. Can you imagine if Tommy Dreamer goes on to become number one contender? Oh! All we need right now is a cowbell because Pope's ready to dance. Obviously, Dreamer's already dancing. He's took out everybody in that ring. Not it's Tyrus. not the big man. Not Tyrus. Not the big man, Tyrus. But Kenny, great question. We're about to find out. Tommy Dreamer's heart, desire, and determination has been well documented throughout his career. Tommy will never back down. Tommy will never stop. And Tyrus goes low. That'll slow down Dreamer. Oh, there you go, Dream. One thing about Dream, he may be a little round. His hand may be a little big, but Dream was bad, and he know he's bad, then. And Tommy Dreamer cross body block takes down Tyrus, Mr. Anderson. I thought that was Anderson. Yeah. That was Jesse Goddard who jumped out yeah. of his boots. Modern day Don is with a beautiful standing drop kick. Jesse Goddard's almost jumped out of the arena. <laughs> you ain't lying, man. And now up on the apron, Goddard's trying to hang on here with his former partner, Robbie E. Uh -oh. Your next competitor, the Monster Abyss! We talked about the power, mass, and strength of Tyrus. Here's the Monster, the TNA original Abyss. <laughs> And Robbie E got caught in the center of the six-sided ring. The environment certainly changed, partner, with the addition of Abyss. You know what? You got Dreamer. You had Al Snow. Hell, I think Pope should take advantage of this opportunity, what too. What are you talking about? Get off hey, the table. Hit my music, Daddy. Hit Pope's music. Is this happening? The Pope's putting himself in the bound for gold match? Does he realize that Abyss and Tyrus are standing in the center of the ring? I think he just did. Just come back here and sit down. The Pope has, Pope has been eliminated. He eliminated himself. And the action back inside the ring. I'll talk to Pope when he puts his headset back on. The ring divided here. Tommy Dreamer, Robbie E. trying to take down Abyss. Mr. Anderson and Jesse Goddard right. in control of Tyrus. What, what was that? What do you mean? You, you, I'm up there trying to take care of business. You're down here calling for me. I can't leave you alone for a second. Who's going to see the ship? Who's going to make sure that this, this thing going to where it's supposed to do if Pope isn't here? I could have took him out, Daddy. I could have did it. Oh, so for my, for your safety. My benefit, my, my benefit, yeah. you came back to, oh, well, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Tommy Dreamer has Robbie E. Couldn't even concentrate. You was calling the name so loud. Up on the top rope. Why don't you go back to the locker room and take a break? And look at, look at Abyss! Look at Tyrus!
now it's back to Tyrus and Abyss in the middle of the ring. This is a heavyweight fight of epic proportions. This is what you were walking into. Oh, yeah. They're both going to be glad it's not Pope throwing those right hands. I'll tell you that much. Everyone's forgotten about what you did. It only takes one. Tommy Dreamer now. Now, if you were Tommy and you alluded to this earlier, you wouldn't help Abyss try to get rid of uh, yeah. Tyrus? I, I don't. Black hole slam! Tommy pays the price. Black hole slam. Almost for the hole. I'll see you again. You know, that spike is a. There's a spike to be reckoned with by Tyrus, and Abyss is up and over Tyrus! Abyss has been eliminated. Eliminates Abyss! Tommy Dreamer, Mr. Anderson, doing what they can do here. Remember, Mr. Anderson was the first man in the gauntlet. And you know, he's been in there quite some time. And when you're in that type of environment, being number one, it's always going to take a toll on you. And there goes Jesse Goddard nope. trying to hang on, trying to hang on. Robbie E notices it now. As I was saying, you're in there. I don't know. Both of these competitors now, they're playing with fire. Both of them on the edge. Both have gone over the top rope. So if one man slips and falls here or forces the other one off the apron, their chances of being number one contender are gone. They'll be eliminated. Yeah, great point you made there, Barton. And not just that, think about this. They're fighting on the apron. They're, 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 they've completely forgot about their competitors. All it takes is for one or two guys oh. to run over there and knock them off. See what Jesse Goddard did there. Went low on Robbie Eber. Robbie's back in the ring. Oh, not look at long. that. Robbie E has Robbie been eliminated. Has been eliminated. What a nice maneuver there by the modern day Adonis. And Mr. Anderson has Tommy Dreamer up. I believe Dreamer raked the eyes there, turning it around here on Mr. Anderson. Back and forth they go. Mike Check coming. Mike Check delivered. And Tommy Dreamer. Oh gosh, he hit hard out here right Tommy in front Dreamer of Tommy Dreamer has been eliminated. There is no one left to enter the gauntlet. We're down to the final three. It's Anderson. It's Jesse Connors, the men who entered one and two. You know, Paul, I don't know what what range Dreamer has in vocal. Oh, another mic check. check. And Mr. Anderson is going to send Jesse Goddard out of the gauntlet. Jesse Goddard has been eliminated. Okay, well, I guess that makes two. That was two mic checks. So I don't know the range. I don't know uh, the vocal capabilities of a Dreamer and uh, modern day down is Jesse Goddard. But I got to tell you, the way they hit the floor, they're both singing baritone after the mic check. And it's down to Tyrus and Mr. Anderson. Remember, folks, you can win by pinfall submission or throw your opponent over the top rope. Both feet touch the floor. At that point, we will have a number one contender for the world championship. How close, and Tyrus goes for the cover here. As you see referee Brian Hebner not in the ring. How close attention is EC3 paying to this match as Tyrus again goes for the cover. He's got his title defense later tonight, but I mean, you always got to be looking down the road and one of these men, if EC3 is victorious tonight, one of these men will become number one contender. Yeah, and, and you probably know that he's back there rooting for his uh, his man beast, the man dinosaur, if you will, to come out on top. Uh, he pays them, he employs them. So if, if the man dinosaur Tyrus gets the win, then that, maybe that ensures EC3, you know. Um, and Anderson, does he have the strength in him? Oh my God. That just left me speaking. To roll through Tyrus, yes he does. Covered by Mr. Anderson, hooks the leg, and Tyrus kicks out. As Anderson began to hoist up the big man, as you see, Pope just went, lost the words. What incredible strength displayed. That is not something easy to do. Dad, if you're not in the gym, you're not working on those legs and doing leg presses, there's no way he could have got that man up. You know, I've been talking about the winner of this match becoming number one contender. The winner of this match can actually challenge for any championship of their choosing. My assumption being that the winner would automatically go for the world title, yeah. but that might not be the case. As you mentioned, EC3 probably in the back, cheering on his bodyguard, cheering on Tyrus. 
But I mean, the consensus would be, I mean, we didn't really see a tag team competitor out here. Of course, someone could team up in the tag team. Every, every title in TNA here is important. But there's only one that is atop every other title. That's the TNA World Heavyweight title. And if you're in this business, that's the title that you want. Oh, exactly. Championship opportunities rare to come by as Tyrus falls into the cover. And Anderson has been pinned. Your winner, wins. Tyrus. Tyrus with the ICU to Mr. Anderson to secure his future title opportunity. So it's Tyrus with the victory here. Tyrus looked good from the onset. And there is the world champion, EC3. Well, you know, you got to be happy about this. It kind of it 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 give him a double insurance policy, maybe? A breathing room. A breathing room, that's, that's what you say. I think with Tyrus winning here, EC3 can take a step back. Huh? Maybe not be so worried about tonight. Maybe not be so worried. Future. Well, you gotta get past tonight. I'd be worried if I were EC3 about tonight. Yeah, absolutely. And the champ is just beaming. Look at that. I, I got this, Chrissy. I got this one. I got this post match interview. Finally, some good news for EC3. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for my man, Tyrus! That is domination. That is why I brought this man to watch my back. Seeing as you're victorious, now you get to pick to challenge for any title in TNA. And, uh, well, I don't think you're gonna be going for the X Division, my big friend, because you and me are gonna be the next Tag Team Champions. Oh. I'm so tired. I worked so hard. I fought hard. I did it myself. Yes. And boss, you are the reason why I'm here. And you know I got your back. And I took so many bullets for you. But there ain't no bullets in this gun. I did this on my own. I did this for me. And I ain't going for no tag team championships. No X Division Championships, no Women's Championship, no King of the Mountain Championship. I'm coming for the Heavyweight World Championship of the World! So Tyrus says he's coming for the World Championship. No, he said he's coming for the World Heavyweight Championship of the World. I see your point. What does this mean? You talked about EC3 beaming, EC3. The look on his face is completely different. Yeah. And you know what? He has reason to worry really bad right now. Champion has to regroup and focus on the task at hand, and that's tonight. That's Drew Galloway, and that's Matt Hardy. Oh, 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 oh. Nobody does it like the Wolves. Who the hell is Sanjay Dutt? 
And there's Earl Hebner! Get him, Earl! With a senior referee right hand! Spike his son of a bitch and let's win our titles back! Eddie into the cover, Trevor Lee down, and the Wolves are tag team champions! But due to the fact that Myers and Lee were tag team champions, they have an automatic rematch clause that they are invoking here tonight and bound for glory. The following contest is for the World Tag Team Championship. Introducing first the team of Trevor Lee and Brian Myers. Trevor Lee in the front. That is Brian Myers. Back all you are, Brian Myers take nothing away from what they can do inside the ring just because they were a part of the GFW versus TNA situation just because they were a part of Team GFW. These two guys can go and they may become tag team champions here tonight. And their opponents, the team of Eddie Edwards and Davey Richards, your world tag team champions, the Wolves! I find this hard to believe, but Eddie Edwards and Davey Richards, that was Davey in the front, there is Eddie Edwards, five times, Parker, they've won the TNA World Tag Team titles. Five times over! I gotta tell you, the Wolves are cooking on all cylinders, so I don't think we've seen the end of the title reigns, if you will. They're gonna accumulate a lot more in this business. Their chemistry is off the chart. Eddie Edwards and Davey Richards. The titles were basically stolen from them. Yeah. Brilliant play by Jeff Jarrett. Give him his credit and his due when they would come out and cash in the Feaster Fire briefcase, giving, essentially giving Trevor Lee and Brian Myers the tag team titles. The Wolves will get their titles back, but here we go. One on one match for the TNA World Tag Team Championship. Talk about brilliance. Let's talk about, let's talk about the fact that Trevor Lee, uh, uh, let's talk about the fact that the Prince of Queens, Brian Myers, they invoked their rematch clause not immediately after they lost it, but they wanted to wait for the biggest stage there is in TNA. We're talking about Battle for Glory to get that opportunity so they can showcase just what they're made about to the world. Trevor Lee just turned 22 years old. Grew up in Cameron, North Carolina. Basically grew up with the Hardys. Trevor Lee's father started Omega Wrestling with Matt Hardy years ago, covered by Trevor Lee. And I asked Trevor about his sort of his unkempt appearance. I said, talk to me about this beard. And yeah. he said, look, I, I grew the beard because I wanted to start wrestling when I was 18. I looked like a kid, and the beard helped me sort of mask that and allow me to look more like a man. So he just wanted to wrestle and look like a grown-up, and yeah. Trevor Lee has kept the beard. Well, that's done him a lot of favors. Um, I, Pope just thought he was a mountain man, but the kid definitely has an uh, opportunity, an uh, opportunistic mindset, that is, and he's taking advantage of it right here, right now. Oh, and the Wolves. So fluid, so good. Again, they can basically read each other's minds. And Trevor Lee sent to the outside. There hasn't been a more cohesive unit when you talk about reading each other's mind, their mindset, knowing what they're gonna do next, move for move. I mean, these boys are a throwback to the great Midnight Express, if you will. These guys, uh, if there's any team, tag team in wrestling, that's the team you want to study because these guys have the chemistry that showcased just what those boys did back in the day. And he rips in off the tag. So intense are the Wolves, but they don't waste movement inside the ring. Not any movement wasted, and that's because every second counts, every minute counts. You don't want to waste a move because you waste a move, you waste your breath, you waste your breath, you waste energy. And in these type of situations, you need your energy, Daddy, to come out on top, especially against someone like Brian uh, Myers and, and Trevor Lee. Brian Myers is a very accomplished tag team wrestler. Brian Myers has held championships all over the world. Trevor Lee misses with the clothesline, and Trevor Lee turns Davey inside out. We made a have new champions. 
And Davey escapes it too. Trevor Lee catching David Richards with the inside out. And hey, man, we've seen him win with that maneuver. We've seen him use it several times. I'm, I, what a way to catch David. I'm surprised he kicked out. Brian Myers using the tag rope to his advantage, unbeknownst to referee Stifler, who was tied up with Eddie Edwards on the outside. Not often that you'll catch the Wolves off their game, but Lee and Myers are doing it early here. Yeah, and, and I don't think they're necessarily getting the Wolves off the game because uh, the Wolves know what to expect uh, when they were stepping in the ring again with these men who upset them once before and took the titles. The Wolves know what these boys are about, but I just think, much like you said earlier, Trevor Lee and Brian Myers right now, they came out to prove a point. They chose this stage to do it, and they want to make best of their opportunity. Trevor Lee, the internet sensation, would love to pick up a victory here. Hey, come on. Hey, come on. Early in his career, become one half of the TNA World Tag Team Champions. He already had his, has it on his resume, but you know, feast or fire in the way that they won the championship. A little hollow. Uh, I, I, I really don't think they care how they won it. Uh, hollow, yes, I agree with you on that, partner. But hey, a win's a win, a title reign is a title reign. But to your point, you know, Trevor Lee wants to be in that position yet again. Tigre Uno retained the X Division Championship in a thrilling Ultimate X match to get us started here on Bound for Glory. Tyrus wins Bound for Gold, and he told EC3, and I'll be coming for the World Championship one day. Eddie Edwards with retribution on Trevor Lee, and Eddie dialing it up here, quickening the pace with Brian Myers. Ooh, a high back elbow there. And Eddie fires right back. We've seen Eddie go for this and hit it several times. Send the shock waves up the spine. Falls into the cover and Brian Myers kicks out at two. Still to come, knockouts championship match. Gail Kim goes one-on-one -on -one with Awesome Kong. We've been talking about EC3 defending the world championship tonight against both Drew Galloway and Matt Hardy. Jeff Hardy will serve as special guest referee. Eddie backs Brian Myers in. There goes Trevor Lee and Davey Richards right behind. And here comes Eddie. And down goes Myers. Eddie hooks the outside leg and a kick out at two. Man, I, when you talk about, as you mentioned, Uno and, and what we received in that matchup, uh, just look at what we're getting here. And, and we're still in the, in, in the beginning part of this match. And it's only going to get more crazier. These boys are going to let it all hang out. Trevor Lee provided the quick distraction. Lee got knocked down, but it allowed Brian Myers to take advantage. And then Trevor Lee came around to our side of the ring here and picked the ankles of Davey Richards. Yeah, uh, the, uh, the viewers at home didn't get a chance to see that, but Trevor Lee right now. Cover, cover, new champions perhaps, and Eddie kicks out of two. Trevor Lee was just <laughs> running the gauntlet, if you will. I mean, he just ran around the ring and just pulled Davey Richards down and slammed him on the floor right in front of our broadcast table. You know, it looked like Trevor Lee, it's, it's the little things too in a yeah. match, the nuances, and it looked like Trevor was gonna celebrate there, and then he just came around, and unbeknownst to Davey, just swept the legs. Very smart, very canny, and one thing I know for sure when I talked to him before this, earlier that is, before we came on, he told me the same thing. He's a studier, he's a student of the game, and, and get this, he even studied the Wolves. So, you know, what does that say about him? He being Trevor Lee. Yeah, thank you for the he being, Danny. That's right, Trevor Lee. And Trevor Lee now with the cover. Stifler there, and Eddie had that shoulder up. Trevor Lee now with the real neck. <laughs> Almost said real neck, but the kid with the chin lock there. Trevor Lee, just a tremendous athlete. As Eddie Edwards. Breaks the hold here. Eddie knows what he needs to do. He needs to make the tag to Davey. Eddie will not stay in the ring any longer than he has to, but Brian Myers there to make the stop, and Myers puts more real estate between Eddie and Davey. And that's a very smart thing to do in these tag team situations. You want to cut the ring off. You want to make sure that your opponent, ooh, when you talk about no wasted movement, you want to make sure your opponent is spending all of the energy, is spending all of his, 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 his breath to try to get to the other side of the ring. And again, Davey Richards trying to get involved in this match, and it's costing the Wolves dearly. 
This is not the type of match that I thought we'd see from Trevor Lee and Brian Myers. They came in with a sound strategy. They're implementing it. They weathered the early storm from the Wolves, and now Lee and Myers are in control. They came in fast. Uh, they, they, let's not forget, they did jump the Wolves. They, 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 they took them from behind and, and, and got a fast start on them. And right now, the Wolves haven't really recuperated and, and found their stride, if you will. Did you see the velocity there? in which Trevor Lee sent Eddie Edwards into the buckle. Another quick tag, and here comes Brian Myers. This is Tag Team Wrestling 101. 101. Brian Myers, cover, hooks the leg again, and a kick out by Eddie Edwards. And again, Eddie immediately looks to the corner, looks to make the tag to Davey Richards. You can hear our fans. Let's go Wolves. Well, that's another thing I want to ask you about. Lee and Myers kind of come into hostile territory when they were a part of GFW. How much do you think they talked about, hey, let's try to get the fans out of this match? Well, you know what? And our fans here at Impact Wrestling, as loyal as they are, you know, the fans are going to stay with the homegrown, if you will. They're going to stay behind the Wolves on the home front. Eddie Edwards trying for the opportunity here. The window slightly open. Eddie needs to make the tag desperately to Davey Richards. Can Eddie Edwards get to the other side of the ring? Lee and Myers this time can't take out Davey. Eddie with the double Hurricane Rana. Now's his time. If there's ever been a time, the tag is right now if he can make it. And here comes Davey Richards. And Davey taking it right to Myers and Lee. A little two for one. I love it, Daddy. Here we go. It's that shot of caffeine that Pope so needs. Davy dialing it up here, Davy. Oh, what a kick to Trevor Lee. And the Wolves are going to retain their titles here tonight. A kick out by Trevor Lee. Wanted to say Shane's a great mover there with that springboard off the ropes, back whatever he did, but he didn't do it. He made it better. That's what we get when we have the Wolves. They take everything and make it better. Davey Richards very comfortable on the top rope. Misses with the stop, rolls through. And Trevor Lee right to the jaw of Davey Richards. Trevor Lee gets caught. Nice T-bone suplex there. Shot Trevor Lee straight to the outside of the ring. And look at the face. Look at the face of Davey Richards. Trevor Lee might be safest on the outside as it relates to being pinned, but I don't think Trevor Lee has any idea what's about to happen right now. Brian Myers with the interception. Trevor Lee looked like he was out on, on his feet. And this is where referee Stifler needs to gain control here. He's been letting the this match go a little bit, needs to get involved as all four men inside the ring. And well, the Wolves will help take out Trevor Lee and Brian Myers. Well, there's the howl, and here we go. Double suicide, Dan! Classic Wolves! And they appreciate it here, live in Charlotte. Again, that's what I was talking about earlier, partner. I, it's not just a suicide dive. We've seen those, we've seen over the top rope, but when the Wolves do it, it's something special. A little added spice, a little added intensity, aggression. And Davey and Eddie back at it here with Trevor Lee. Eddie Edwards, oh, turn Trevor Lee inside out. And Davey, this time connects with the stump. That has to be it. The cover on Trevor Lee and the Wolves were that close to retaining their titles. The Prince of Queens, Brian Myers, just saved his championship opportunity with his partner. That was it. It was over. Tag was made here, so Eddie Edwards becomes the legal man. And again, with the action so fast and furious, it's tough for Stifler, the referee, to gain control here. Trevor Lee got caught, and the Wolves go to work. Eddie was thinking power about Trevor Lee rolls through. We can have new champions, and Eddie pops for you, too. Oh, man, that was close. 
Look at that knee! The man got such great leaping ability! Brian Myers sneaks in, and a German suplex! Hands locked, Eddie Edwards down, and Davey breaks it up! That was a delayed mega suplex! <laughs> what strength by that kid displayed, that kid being Trevor Lee, of course. Just amazing. Two legal men in the ring, Davey Richards. Sends Brian Myers into the guardrail on the outside. Davey right back in the ring. Myers was knocked a little loop. And Davey Richards. Come on! Big shot there to Trevor Lee. Precarious situation here for both Davey and Trevor. Here comes Brian Myers. This doesn't look good for any of those guys up there on the top rope. Oh! Davey takes care of Myers, but Trevor Lee right there, and here comes Eddie Edwards. Action all over the place. Top rope Hurricane Rana by Eddie Edwards to Brian Myers. Rich is back up to the top now, partner, going what he was going for. Superplex to Trevor Lee. He held on. Big shot by Eddie, and the legal man the cover and the wolves retain their titles your winners and still world tag team champions the wolves we can talk about trying to maintain order all we want throw that out the window this was an incredible match guys were flying in sticking and moving and in the end, Eddie Edwards and Davey Richards retain their World Tag Team titles. And it all went down like this, partner. Well, it's about for Goran, as you can see right there, with the superplex off the top rope, followed by the, the brain buster with the assistant kick by Eddie Edwards, and the Wolves retain their TNA World Tag Team Championship. Congratulations to Eddie Edwards and Davey Richards. An incredible match here. And in the end, the World Tag Team titles go home with the incumbent champions. The titles go home with Eddie Edwards and Davey Richards. The Wolves. Great match. And standing by right now is our broadcast colleague, Jeremy Borash. JB has an interview with one of the men competing in tonight's main event. All right, thank you very much, guys. Wow, what a night. We are off and running here live backstage at Bound for Glory. Use the hashtag Bound for Glory tonight on all your social media channels. And certainly the main event tonight for the World Heavyweight Championship in this entire picture has been thrown a giant curveball just four days ago when Matt Hardy was added to the main event of Bound for Glory tonight. Drew Galloway, come on in at this time, if you would, sir. I question this situation and how you must be dealing with it four days after the fact. This is now going to be a three-way matchup tonight. I came to TNA almost a year ago for a couple of reasons. Compete with the best and show the world the real Drew Galloway. Now I've had some ups and downs during my time here and I've achieved some great things namely leading Team TNA to victory over GFW while EC3 sat on the sidelines like a little bitch. Now I know Matt Hardy been added to the match the curveball. I know his brother Jeff is the ref's a curveball. EC3 with Tyrus, undefeated two years as a curveball. I've been throwing curveballs my entire career. I have always overcome and it shaped me into the man I am today, wrestling's chosen one. People seem to forget that a triple threat is essentially a no disqualification match. And with the world title on the line, the main event, I'm not just willing to do whatever it takes. I'm willing to kill myself. Your ass. I'm going to become the king of the mountain champion. He 
AJ Black right into the Rude Bomb. Rude Bomb. Bobby Rude victorious. I'm the king of the mountain champion now. It belongs to me. This is going to be a straight up one on one classic between Lashley and Bobby Roode, two guys with a rich history. Not just that, Daddy, talking about two guys that have been there, that have been to the top of TNA here in Impact Wrestling, two guys that have held the prestigious TNA World Heavyweight title, and you know this match is going to be a hoopla, if you will. You know, Lashley would love to become King of the Mountain champion here tonight. Head bound for glory. And his opponent from Toronto, Canada, the it factor of professional wrestling, and your King of the Mountain champion, Bobby Roos. A purist in every sense of the word. A wrestler's wrestler. Bobby Roode, as you saw moments ago, defeated PJ Black to become the King of the Mountain champion. A title that was introduced at Slammiversary. That match was won by Jeff Jarrett. So that's the uh, lineage of the King of the Mountain Championship, you know that Bobby Roode is very proud of being the holder of the King of the Mountain title. Well, as far as I'm concerned, partner, the lineage, if you will, starts with the it factor, Bobby Roode. I, I, I have no concern any longer. I have no respect, if you will. Therefore, I will not mention that name that you just mentioned. Because right now, we have someone who represents that title proudly and someone who's going to do it justice. And either one of these men, whoever comes out on top, they will do the same, whether that be Bobby Lashley or whether that be the hit factor, Mr. Root. They've had competitive matches all over the world. Who can forget when they battled one-on-one -on -one in New York City over the World Championship, and now here we are at Bound for Glory. Bobby Root and Lashley. Lashley goes every bit of 276 pounds. Two-time world champion. His MMA record right now stands at 14 and two. We talk all the time, you and I, about how Lashley is just always one match away from being in the talk of the world championship. One match away from greatness, if you will. Speaking of, of his MMA background, his MMA career and, and, and being on top, he has the opportunity again because, you know, look at him right now. He's coming up on another fight November the 6th. And you know to have the TNA King of the Mountain Championship going into that is only going to give him momentum, only going to give him more confidence. Not that he needs it. Bobby Roode, all he's done in his career is become the longest reigning TNA champion of all time. An incredible feat when you think about all the men that have vied for the world title. Not just by the guys that have held it, you know, we're, we're, we're talking some of the greats in this industry. Kurt Angle, the first ever TNA World Champion. He goes one on one with Eric Young tonight. I can't wait to see Kurt Angle return to action. I talked to Bobby Roode earlier. He was in a great place, but he talked about how, look, I know that strength wise and power wise, I'm not matched against Lashley, but I think when you know what your opponent has over you, you can game plan a little differently. Absolutely, and, and, and that's what you do. I mean, you say, okay, here's my opponent's strength. 
Now I'm going to focus on the weakness. I have to know how to avoid the strength. I have to play to, to, to my own strength and capitalize on the weakness. And you know what? Look what's going on right now. Weakness being and strength being it factor. Bobby Roode is a better wrestler in Pope's opinion, technically speaking, than Lashley. So now he's trying to go to the wrestling game. There isn't really a chink in the armor of the offense of Lashley. I mean, he's got it all. He can stand there and fight with you. He'll get down on the mat and wrestle with right. you. But I think you have a point here, and Bobby Roode may feel that he does have the advantage in a wrestling match right. against Lashley. I mean, we don't take away nothing from Lashley's uh, uh, amateur wrestling background, but this is professional wrestling. Uh, uh, when it comes to being a mat te te technician, that's that's rude. That's the it factor. This man does it all inside of that side of the ring. You know, the other thing about Bobby Roode is that he's so cool and calm and calculated that it's tough to get him off of his game. Yeah. He's always thinking. He's thinking right now. You got to know it. Uh, didn't do much good if he was. Lashley with a nice standing clothesline. And again, Lashley always in position, always ready. He's always yeah. one spear away from a quick victory. And Bobby Roode, keep your head on a swivel in the ring here against Lashley. Pope was just about to mention that. Just the way Bobby is so... Well, here we go. Classic. Wait for it. Wait for it. Classic Lashley with the standing vertical souffle on Bobby Roode. I'm going to keep count of the amount of power moves that Lashley throws at Bobby Roode in this match. And as you were saying, partner, Lashley right back into position. He's always ready for the next move, the next uh, uh, opportunity. Oh, and did you notice Bobby Roode looked between his legs there, saw Lashley was coming and avoids, looking for the Roode bomb here. And we have a standstill. High level of intensity here. These are two men who their personalities sort of mirror one another. Both quiet, like to show up early, get their work done, go home. Lashley. And Mr. Mr. Rude has a uh, nice following, as you can hear the crowd was chanting for him. But Lashley has his supporters out here as well. You know, I think the fans right now just want to sit back and enjoy what's going on here. These two top-notch caliber athletes and to see how this thing is going to unfold. I think they know they're in for a long one. Oh, yeah. It's going to take a lot more. Maybe not. Hold that thought. What a throw there by Lashley. And it looked like Rude almost tried to turn over there and landed high on his shoulder. That could affect Bobby Rude in this match. Yeah, Josh, don't talk about the shoulder, Daddy, because Pope Pope has been there, and, and the way Rude just landed did not look good. That can separate your shoulder in a heartbeat. And Lashley going back to the power game. Cover doesn't hook the leg, and Bobby Rude kicks out at two. Lashley, though, no separation, right back in control of the body, the head of Bobby Rude. And just the way that I'm looking at Lashley, I'm looking at the way that he's going into this matchup with Rude, the way that he's been positioning himself, the way that he hasn't allowed his opponent to, to get out of his grasp. This says to me that his MMA training is kicking in as well. I, I think he's applying that in this matchup. Just the closeness. See, Bobby Rude, his plan there was to get back to a vertical base, create some separation here. Lashley providing none. And now Rude, he closes in on Lashley. Lashley looked like he's going for it again. You said just going to keep count. What count this? Ooh. Oh, that would have been the second yeah. suplex, but a knee right to the top of the head. And Bobby Roode in control. He hooks the leg and a kick out of two by Lashley. Roode with a version of his own. Dropping Lashley with a souffle. And here comes Lashley. High back elbow there by Bobby Roode. Tremendous competitive matchup here between Root and Lashley. Blockbuster from the second rope. And now Root, another cover, hooks the leg again and a kick out at two. All these covers by Bobby Root, does he expect to win off of these moves or is he sort of trying to find out where Lashley is? Both. You don't stop a, a ground and pound and, and, and the inspector just 
you know, you expect to win. You ground and pound. If you win, you win. If you don't, you weigh your opponent down. So with the covers here that Rude is doing, if he wins, he wins. Nice technical, classic Rude. Floats over into the cover, hooks the leg, and Lashley. That was an angry kick out there by Lashley. I was just, I was just impressed as I always am when Rude goes for that spine buster. There's only one man in the history of this business that has done it better. And we're talking about Double A, of course, Arn Anderson, but Rude now has to take advantage. Now he needs to get on top of Lashley and try to get this train moving. And Lashley with a spine buster of his own here on Bobby Roode, who's down and who kicks out at two. Just to go back to the covers, one last point, when you do cover, when you go for those lateral presses, it takes so much energy to kick out it's almost all of your strength in order to stay alive. Submission maneuver here by Lashley. Again, MMA training coming into a uh, play here. And Lashley now, he's thinking something. And Lashley drives Bobby Roode to the outside. Bobby Roode is writhing. I don't know if it's a respect thing, but I was wondering what was taking Lashley so long to go out there and put him back in the ring, him being rude, throw his butt back in the ring and, 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 and try to take advantage of it, capitalize on what you just did, and he did just that. And Lashley gonna take advantage of being outside the ring here. How smart is that? Lashley knew just by knocking Rude off the apron and into the steel barrier that his, his ribs, which also is affected in the back, was hurt. So he's going back on the attack. And you saw Lashley roll back into the ring. He did that, folks, so he can break the count. Referee Brian Hebner forced to start his count over again because Lashley did that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He said he wants the title. Put the title on him is what he's saying. You think he's calling for this match already? You think he, he knows he has it? This match for the King of the Mountain Championship. Lashley, very confident as he walked around ringside moments ago. And Lashley, snap suplex, floats over, Bobby Roode down and kicks out at two. And look right back on top. And that's the way it should be. See the way Lashley just manhandles Bobby. I mean, the, the size of the hands of Lashley, he's just able to turn a grown man around in Bobby Roode. Ooh. But you can never count the it factor out. You can never count one Bobby Roode out, maybe thinking a blockbuster again. His shoulder, the yeah. shoulder of Bobby Roode is giving him fits right now. And Lashley just snatched Bobby Roode out of midair. What a power slam! The whole floor just vibrated after Lashley dropped Rude with that thunderous power slam. And the Destroyer is poised for a spear here on Bobby Rude. Spear by Lashley! He hit it! He Lashley hit it. is going to become the King of the Mountain champion. Bobby Rude down and somehow kicks out at two. I can't believe that. I think the fans thought it was over, too. Tremendous endurance by both of these incredible athletes. Lashley looks stunned. Yeah. He looks a little off now. He looks a little off his game. And Bobby Roode counters. Roode bottom of the center of the ring. Roode's going to retain his title. Roode's going to defeat Lashley. And Lashley got the inside shoulder up at two. Not quite enough. Both of these boys are going to have to dig deep. They're gonna have to dig deep, partner, and pull out a maybe a quick maneuver, a surprise maneuver, who knows? But Bobby Roode kicked out of Lashley's spear. Right. Lashley kicked out of the Roode bomb. Right again. Where do you go from here? Well, uh, again, almost you're gonna have to incapacitate your opponent because as long as both of these men have breath in their body, they're not gonna lay there. If they can kick their arm up, cross that's face, it. cross that's face. It. Cross face by Bobby Roode. That's what you're gonna have to do because they got breath in their body. They're gonna kick out. They're gonna lift their arm up. So incapacitate your opponent or submit them. And that is what Roode trying to do right now to Lashley. Lashley is trapped in the cross face. He tried to reach the bottom rope. He couldn't Look. do it. And now Lashley stands up. Roode hangs on and Lashley again.
has the arm of Bobby Roode locked. I believe that's almost like a Kimura lock. And it may force Bobby Roode to tap out. Look at the positioning of Lashley's legs. Yes. Lashley has Bobby Roode in the perfect position. And he has leverage. He has leverage. Don't, don't call Paul Part it. I'm not an expert in the MMA realm, but. And Roode rolls through, and Bobby Roode is trying to get the cross face back in, and he does. And with the arm trapped, and with the, the wrist, that bone in the form right across the bridge of the nose, this thing could be over. Lashley's trying to get up again. He's Lashley up. may be forced to tap out, but he makes his way back to a vertical base, holds on to Bobby Roode, and Lashley with a Roode bomb. Lashley may beat Bobby Roode with his own move here tonight. And Bobby Roode kicks out. Let me tell you something, Josh. Even though Lashley didn't get the pin using the own maneuver of his competitor, right now, that's going to win in the sight game. That's going to affect Bobby Roode's sight game. This man just tried to beat him. That man, man Bobby uh, Lashley, of course, just tried to beat him with his own maneuver. The move that Bobby Roode has defeated so many people with, the Roode bomb. And now Lashley. Looking for another spear on Bobby Roode, who sidesteps. Roode off the rope. And a spear by Bobby Roode! Bobby Roode into the cover! Lashley down! And Lashley escapes it, too! I'll see you doing my maneuver, and I'll raise you a spear, said Bobby Roode. What a match. Oh, man. What a classic matchup this is. Whose will will take them to victory? Bobby Roode or Lashley here tonight at Bound for Glory as Bobby Roode delivered a thunderous spear. Look what we're witnessing here. Right now, look at, look at Roode off the rope with a spear I'm almost perfectly. This company, man, is built just off of that type of fantastic wrestling. And Lashley, Lashley sends Bobby Roode off the top rope. Thought it was intriguing that Rude was gonna go high risk there. Look at the face of Lashley. It almost, Look at the face. It almost screams desperation. Rude sidesteps again. Lashley's confused. Rude up. Bobby Rude's got Lashley. Was looking for the root bomb. Lashley countered. And the shoulder. Remember the shoulder yeah. and the arm of Bobby Rude who somehow gets Lashley up. How impressive. There's the root bomb. bomb. Bobby Rude into the cover. Hooks the leg. Has retained the King of the Mountain Championship. Your winner and still King of the Mountain Champion, Bobby Roode. We just witnessed something incredible. Oh, yeah. Something special. Oh, yeah. Bobby Roode and Lashley left it all in the ring. I didn't think it was possible. I didn't think that you could do it. How? Tell me how do you stop a tank that moves like a race car? Well, Bobby Roode found the way to do it, and it took two root bombs and a spear. Good grief. Congratulations. Yep. Throughout the match, it was almost wherever you can do, I can yeah. do better. That escalated to the point where we saw a spear from Roode, a root bomb from Lashley. But in the end, Bobby Roode gets it done. I got goosebumps after that match. That was awesome. Hope is sweating as if he was in that match. What a great match. What a classic, what a fantastic showdown we just witnessed between two of the top athletes here in Impact Wrestling. TNA Battle for Glory Daddy. This is what it's all about. Look what's going on right now. Bobby Roode showing a sign of sportsmanship here. And Lashley, yeah. not a boy. Lashley has nothing to be upset about, nothing to be mad about. That was an incredible match that could have gone either way. Nothing to be ashamed of there. As we take a look at how it played out, Bobby Roode standing here victorious. It could have gone either way, especially after big moves like this by Lashley. Lashley with the standing vertical souffle was going for it again. Bobby with the knee to the top of the head and hit a souffle of his own, turned it into almost a bomb. But then Bobby, his Rude goes to the apron and out to the ring and then follows in with Bobby Lashley, gets the spear on Rude, but it wasn't over. Somehow, Rude would kick out. A look of shock in the face of Lashley. 
Bobby Roode would deliver a spear. Lashley would kick out. Back and forth they would go. A second Roode bomb. And Bobby Roode would put the nail in the coffin of Lashley's chances at becoming King of the Mountain champion at Bound for Glory. What a huge win for Bobby Roode tonight here at Bound for Glory. And tonight's main event, triple threat match for the World Heavyweight Championship. Some very intense comments earlier tonight from Drew Galloway. Matt Hardy, come on in at this time, if you would, please. You are here in your home state of North Carolina. And tonight, just, just four days ago, you were entered into the World Heavyweight title picture. Is tonight the night you fulfill your destiny? I think tonight is the night. You know, this last year, it's been an emotional roller coaster for me, JB. Hell, my whole career, my life has been. But anyone out there who knows my history, who knows my story, they know how much tonight means to me. It means everything to me. I grew up 100 miles down the road in Cameron. Man, Jeff Hardy, born and bred in North Carolina. All we had was a dream. We wanted to be the greatest tag team on the planet. We wanted to be the world tag team champions just one time. Obviously, we achieved that goal many times over. And then we set bigger goals for ourselves. We both individually wanted to be world heavyweight champions. And I'm so proud of Jeff. He's done it. He's done it a few times. Tonight is my night. When I set up the hashtag Matt for Champ months ago, I promised I would not stop until it became a reality. And I can't think of a better place to do it than Bound for Glory in Charlotte, North Carolina. And I'm doing it, JV, in front of my fellow North Carolinians, my family, and my friends. Hell, man, my dad, the legend, he's here tonight. My wife, Revy Sky, she's here tonight. My newborn baby boy, Maxwell, he's here tonight. Hell, man, my brother, Jeffrey Nero Hardy, the charismatic enigma, he's here tonight as the referee to make sure I get a fair shake in this deal. Tonight, my dream becomes a reality. Matt Hardy becomes the TNA World Heavyweight Champion! Ah! All right, best of luck, Matt Hardy, headed to the main event of Bound for Glory. Let's head back to ringside. Pope and Josh, take it away. JB, thank you very much. Matt Hardy's fired up. Are you kidding me? Why wouldn't he be? He, his family's here. His family's in the match with him as a referee. Hey, it's a big night, man. Our main event still to come, but ladies and gentlemen, last night in Salem, Virginia, the world's most famous referee, Earl Hebner, took his rightful place in the TNA Hall of Fame, surrounded by friends and family. It was hosted by JB, TNA executive, lead singer of the legendary Smashing Pumpkins, Billy Corgan, would handle inducting Earl into the TNA Hall of Fame. A tremendous honor. The stars were out last night. Congratulations from us here at ringside to the world's most famous referee, Earl Hebner, in the TNA Hall of Fame. Great night for Earl. I saw him earlier today. Earl was just smiling ear to ear after last night's in in induction into the Hall of Fame. And there you see TNA executive Billy Corgan. Billy Corgan inside the ring here. Billy said it was a tremendous honor to induct Earl Hebner into the TNA Hall of Fame. And we'll go inside the ring now and hear from TNA executive Billy Corgan. Ladies and gentlemen, last night in Salem, Virginia, I was given the honor of inducting a living legend in the TNA Hall of Fame. So please join me in looking at some of the highlights from the long and illustrious career, career a referee, Earl Hebner. Three decades ago, a young man named Earl Hebner stepped into a professional wrestling ring, not knowing his lifelong passion for the sport would make him a household name. Tonight, the entire wrestling world and its millions of fans pay tribute to the career of Earl Hebner. He has been the law and order for the most memorable matches and been at the center of the most controversial and heartbreaking moments in wrestling history. His experience and knowledge are unquestioned, 
Earl truly is the best referee in the history of professional wrestling. His kindness and friendship held in the highest regard. He's always there to uh, put a smile on your face, offer advice, words of encouragement. He's the best. In my mind, Earl Hebner is the greatest referee to ever take part in pro wrestling. An amazing journey that stands among the greatest personalities and athletes since the dawn of wrestling. He just has a larger than life personality, and that's something that's always carried through. Congratulations, Earl. You deserve it. Basically, watching him growing up and seeing everything he's done, it's just everything in the world that he deserves. If there's a referee in the world uh, in professional wrestling that deserves to go into Hall of Fame, it, it's definitely Earl Hebner. Earl, personally, man, I love you, and you are the best and rightfully deserving to be in the Hall of Fame. Congrats, Earl. Well, you know, Earl was like the, a legend then. He's a legend now. Dad, I want to let you know that I'm very, very proud of you. This is so much something that you deserve. And I want you to know, not only are you the best ref in the world, you've done more than any other referee, but you're the best dad. And I appreciate everything you've done, not only for this business, but also for me. But the book of pro wrestling will forever be written. And within those pages, Earl Hebner's name is forever immortalized among thousands of matches and moments as the greatest referee to ever grace a ring. And now, the greatest referee in the history of pro wrestling takes his place in the TNA Wrestling Hall of Fame. So let's bring out our new inductee. 2015 Hall of Fame member, Earl Hebner. Tremendous honor for Earl Hebner. Congratulations from all of us at TNA. Sir Earl had a great conversation with him earlier, as I was telling you about, partner. So happy. You couldn't wipe the smile off his face. Look, I'm thrilled for Earl. I'm ecstatic. Uh, Earl refereed a lot of Pope's matches. A lot of that was by request, because I respect Earl as the greatest referee in this business today. Congratulations, Earl Hebner, TNA Hall of Famer. Kong is one of my toughest opponents to date. I think the fans would agree. I think my body would agree that when Kong and I come together, you just never know what's gonna happen. I respect the hell out of her. And when we're in the ring, we both give it all we've got. And like I've said before, all the pain I went through, all the pain that my body went through, I wouldn't take back one minute of that for anything. This match at Bound for Glory is about our legacy. Who truly is the best? I was the very first Knockouts Champion, and I intend to stay Knockouts Champion come Bound for Glory 2015. Who's gonna go down as the best TNA Knockouts Champion ever? This match will go down in history. And when the history books are written about our Knockouts division, it's gonna say one thing. Bound for Glory 2015, Gail Kim defeats Awesome Kong. The following contest is for the Knockouts Championship. Introducing first from Tokyo, Japan, Awesome Kong! She's a two-time. Knockouts champion, the second ever Knockouts champion. Her history with Gail Kim is unprecedented. It's off the charts. These two have had battles, they've had wars, and they write their latest chapter. Here tonight at Bound for Glory, the awesome Kong leave as Knockouts champion. There's always a likelihood and possibility that it can and will happen. We're talking about Queen Kong, if you will. She's awesome, she's amazing, Daddy. And there's anybody that can get it done, if there is somebody that can take out Gail Kim, it's Awesome Kong. She's done it. And 
your opponent from Toronto, Canada, your Knockouts Champion, Gail Kim! Never met a competitor that puts more pressure on themselves than Gail Kim. She truly wants to be the best. She wants to go down as the greatest Knockouts Champion ever. She's now a five-time Knockouts Champion. That's tied for the second most reigns of all time with Madison Rain, only to Angelina Love, who has six reigns as the Knockouts Champion. Well, you said that uh, Gail Kim wants to go down. Hell, Gail Kim is the pioneer. We're looking at the two pioneers of that very championship title that Gail Kim holds, the pioneers of the knockout division itself. So when you talk about Gail Kim going down in history, Daddy, as the greatest knockout, there's only two, I think, that can lay claim to that, and they're both in the ring right now. The direction of women's wrestling certainly changed when Gayle Kim and Awesome Kong started competing against one another for the Knockouts Championship. If Gayle Kim is gonna win this match, partner, what is she gonna need to do early against Awesome Kong? There's nothing about early, it's nothing about how later, what it is right now, it's gonna be a test of willpower, if you will. Willpower, that's what it's gonna take because I'm telling you right now, Gail's gonna use her speed, she's gonna use her athleticism to try to take Kong off of her game, but Kong being the powerhouse that she is of the knockout division, that's gonna be a test for Gail Kim to overcome. The longest reigning knockouts champion of all time, Taryn Terrell. Held on to the title for 217 consecutive days. Past champions include Mickey James, Velvet Sky, Tara, Brooke, of course, in there as well. Well, uh, there you go with the numbers, Josh, right now. Pope is more focused, hell, not just Pope. Look, look, Pope, if you don't want to focus on his dad to take those headsets off, give them to him, our third personality. This thing here can main event any. This is what I'm telling you, Gail Kim, Awesome Khan, they can main event any event, any show, and right now, uh-oh, this is advanced. Now they were dueling, let's go Kong, let's go Gail Kim chance during your little diatribe well, there. Th that's because how important is this matchup, man? This, this is a monumental, historical matchup as far as Pope is concerned, and I'm hyped about it. I don't know about you, but I'm hyped. Couldn't agree with you more. I've had this match circled for quite some time as it relates to Bound for Glory. Got some debates back and forth about who will leave as Knockouts Champion. As Awesome Kong just imposing her will here against Gail Kim. Well, I, I just got a notification, Josh. Uh, it's time for Fearless Predictions. Who do you got in this matchup? I'm gonna go with the current champion. I'm gonna go with Gail Kim. I don't know how you got a notification. No one in this building has had cell service all day. But you got a notification. I'm going with Gail Kim. I think that Gail will be able to retain her championship here. It's not looking good right now as to whether the early storm of Awesome Kong. Well, I know you put me on the spot several times with this very matchup. And, and, and one time, Pope did uh, go with the mean queen, uh, Queen Kong, if you will, Awesome Kong. Amazing Kong, I mean, she's all of that and more. But I don't feel that we do any of these competitors, these knockouts, any justice by choosing one of them. I think we just let it happen. And Gail Kim off the top rope. Not sure she got all of that of awesome Kong, and Kong able to kick out it too. And there you see the husband of Gail Kim, celebrity chef Robert Irvine. Robert Irvine obviously looking very concerned with Gail right now and the predicament she's in with Awesome Kong. Have you ever had some of that man's cooking, Irvine, the chef? Huh? No, I have not. Uh, he only deal with alias just like Pope. Uh -huh. Did something happen between us that I don't know about uh, before this match? Well, what, do you, what do you mean? We just, we're going so smoothly. We're just talking facts, just talking facts. I'm, I'm so sorry you missed out on it. Well, the we're facts right now. of the matter yeah. are that 
Awesome Kong has Gayo Kim right where she wants her. And you were talking about this earlier, partner. You were talking about what this Gail Kim has to do. Well, what this Awesome Kong has to do, in your opinion? I think she's doing it. Exactly. Slow Gail Kim down, ground her, and keep her immobile. Look at Gail. Look at this by Awesome Kong. Cross arm breaker. Cross arm breaker by Awesome Kong. How often do we do? How often do we see this maneuver? And Kong's got to keep her shoulders off the mat. Great call by TNA Hall of Famer, referee Earl Hebner. That sounds good. Gail's got to watch her shoulders too, but Gail's able to escape. I like the no call there. Submission hold here by Gail. I like the no call with Kong because you couldn't really see the shoulders of Gail Kim. It has to be indisputable, and that's why Earl didn't go for the cover there. We've seen Awesome Kong and Gail Kim battled it out several, several times. All, all over the world. And right now, I'm telling you, Pope have a feeling that during this matchup, this particular matchup on the biggest stage of it all, just like we, we just witnessed, we're gonna see something new from each competitor. Because they know each other so well. Kind of pull something different out. Right. As Awesome Kong, she can rely on her strength though. I mean, she's just got Gale twisted. Gale's got a submission though. Gale's got Kong hooked. Gail Kim was able to turn her body off the back of Awesome Kong and has a submission hole locked in. Great move by Kong. Just go down and Gail Kim almost pinned there. Well, it was a great thing that Awesome Kong used all of her weight to just power out of it and drop Gail Kim to the mat because she couldn't breathe the way she was locked. It looked like she was trying to get some wind there. Completely locked up was Awesome Kong moments ago, but again, uh oh, go to your wheelhouse. And now Kong, this is not in her wheelhouse. Up on the second rope. Gail with a kick to the top of the head. Gail Kim right behind Awesome Kong. Hot pursuit, not letting Kong get any offense in. Off that second rope, that might have done it for Gail Kim. Had she not joined Kong up here, top rope, her Conrada. Not so fast. Champion and Gale just got a little bit of separation there. Able to kick out a two. An awesome splash by Awesome Kong, and look at her. She's upset, she thought that would have done it. Everyone in Charlotte thought that Awesome Kong was gonna do it right there. Gail Kim is in trouble right now. This is not, when I was asking you earlier about if you're Gail, what do you do early? As this match is played out, this is not where Gale wants to be. And, and we talk about the new moves and maneuvers that we will see during this matchup. We see desperation right now. Look at Kong's face. Look, she's just looking for stuff right now. Desperate times, call for desperate measures. And awesome Kong, who knows what's on her mind? We know she's desperate. At least that's what I think. Awesome Kong continues to look for the hardware on the outside of the ring. She's got steel chairs now. She's got two. And it doesn't look like Kong is done looking for weapons of destruction. And there's Robert Irvine. Hey, 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 come on. Hey, what come is on. he doing? Get you back. do your job. You sit down. You do your job. No, you sit down and you say it. Oh, we can. You suck my wife. You suck my wife. Oh, no. Oh, not on the floor. Not on the chairs. No. And Hall of Famer, senior referee Earl Hebner did not see a thing. He was too, too busy to be, being distracted by Irvine. Well, look, Robert Irvine is the husband of Gail Kim. I don't fault him one bit for what he just did. He saw what Awesome Kong had planned for his, his wife, and he tried to put a stop to it. His wife is a knockout. He's a spectator. Sit over in your seat and witness what's transpiring out here in this ring and on the outside of it. And this, is, this is the cause of it, and I couldn't disagree with you more. Sit here and watch one of your family members, watch somebody that you love get picked apart and then see the cruel intentions that Awesome Kong had planned and tell me you're not gonna get involved.
tell me you're not going to try to stop what's going on. I understand what you're saying, but Mama Pope has been to a lot of Pope matches, and if she would have tried to hop over the rail, it would have been a sad sight to see. We're going to see a new champion right now, Awesome Kong, with the cover. Gayo Kim stays alive. Gayo Kim able to kick out. Very surprised. Very surprised. She just took an implant buster on two, three, four steel chairs, however many it was on the outside. And a concrete of floor. Yeah. Awesome Kong. Power bomb. Gayo Kim reverses with the Hurricane Rana. Kong down and Kong powers out at two. How Gale is still in this match, I don't know. Looking for eight defeats thrown off. Back fist! Gale down! Spinning back fist by Awesome Kong. And, and you know, partner, the, the, the fans all around us, behind us, everyone's still standing. They have not sat down since this match has begun. Gale Kim almost took the air out of this arena. She almost pulled off the upset there yeah. with that Hurricane Rana and Awesome Kong continues to stay in control. Is Kong thinking implant buster from up there? Ooh, nice shot by Gail Kim. Again, we're talking about willpower. Ooh. That's what it's going to take right now, not just for Gail Kim, but for both competitors. Awesome. Uh -oh. oh, boy. Kong's got Gail. Oh, look! Look! Eight to feet! Awesome Kong still on her feet. Rolled through here by Gail Kim, and Gail Kim retains the Knockouts Championship. Your winner and still Knockouts Champion, Gail Kim. So Robert Irvine starts the celebration. Gail Kim pulls off the improbable and defeats Awesome Kong. Well, someone's going to eat good tonight. Gonna have a lot of ce celebratory meals, if you will, made by Robert Irvine. I'm gonna just try to make sure that I'm in the midst. Congratulations to Gail Kim, heartfelt victory, and again, partner willpower. She pulled it out. I didn't think that Gail Kim was gonna get it done. I thought we were all but guaranteed a new champion here, but Gail Kim hung around and hung around and hung around and is able to stand tall with the world championship. Here's how it all played out right here. Eat the feet, Gail Kim somehow managed to maneuver in, the, in transition, if you will, and into the small package. And that was all she wrote. Gail Kim, perhaps the greatest knockout of all time, retains her championship against Austin Kong. Great moment here for Gail Kim and her husband, Robert Irvine. Well, Irvine, for a second there, almost cost his wife, in Pope's opinion, her title. So a victory here at Bound for Glory. Great moment for Earl Hebner and Gail Kim as JB is standing by in the locker room area. What an incredible win for your Knockouts Champion of the World, Gail Kim. Congratulations. Tonight, the main event, triple threat for the World Heavyweight Championship. And last time we saw my guest at this time, he was EC3's personal assistant, Jeff Hardy. Tonight, you step into the ring this time as the referee. Last time we saw you, you went right up to EC3 and you said, I quit. That's right, you can't fire me. I quit! Dixie Carter brought me back for one reason, to be the special guest referee tonight. To call this match straight down the middle, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Ethan Carter's money will not save him tonight. Tyrus will not save him tonight. Matt Hardy, he's on a roll. He's twisting fate every day. Drew Galloway, he's standing up, killing it. I'm gonna make all the zebras proud. Creatures, mount up! I went to my doctor this past week and I was diagnosed with a tumor in my neck and I'm gonna have to have surgery. I'm gonna be off for a little while. Kurt Angle had an announcement to make and he's gonna miss some time due to surgery. What does Eric Young have any business being out here for? How many times have I pile drove you, Kurt? The real question, how many pile drivers does your old neck have left? Maybe the next time I pile drive you, you never come back. 
What if I was to tell you I want you gone for Eric Young is the bearded terror of Impact Wrestling, and he's loving it. He's not here because of me. Eric Young is a lunatic. Eric Young has made no friends with anyone in the locker room, and it looks like the entire roster wants a piece of Eric Young. This isn't fair. I shouldn't have to face everybody. You only have to worry about one man. At Bound for Glory, you're going to be facing... match. Introducing first from Nashville, Tennessee, Eric Young! Eric Young wants to destroy Kurt Angle. The words deranged, lunatic, bloodthirsty, psychotic, don't do justice to what this man truly is. He's a maniac. Do you think the bearded terror just wants to destroy Eric Young? Uh, well, not Eric Young. Wants to, do you think he just wants to destroy Kurt Angle? The bearded terror Eric Young wants to destroy everybody here at Impact Wrestling. There are no allegiance. He could care less. He don't care about partnership, partnering up. He respects no one except his own will, his own self. Of course, Eric Young proved that when he turned his back on everyone. Disgusting. And he has the money. Oh. Great to see Kurt Angle back. Tremendous ovation for the TNA Hall of Famer. First ever TNA World Champion. He's held the title on six different occasions. More times than anyone. You know, Josh, everyone is up on their feet right now for the Olympic gold medalist, Kurt Angle. And this is just a moment that I just want to sit back and just enjoy this. This man is not deranged. He just called himself God. Uh, yeah. I hate to say it, but if there's a such thing as a wrestling God in this business, then he's standing across the ring eyeing Eric Young right now. Kurt and that's Angle. Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle looks great. Yeah, he does. Eric Young, 
If anybody could end my career, I know it could be you. Which is exactly why we're not having a wrestling match tonight. I wasn't finished. I talked to Dixie Carter earlier today. We came up with something better. For this crowd here in North Carolina, it's anything goes, no disqualification. I like it. And it starts right now. Kurt Angle, anything goes, no disqualifications. And Angle used the microphone and Eric Young is all over Kurt Angle. I think Kurt expected a little bit of a different outcome here. I don't know, partner, but how great is it? Kurt looks great, and he's already on the attack. Pope's loving this. This is just great. Kurt Angle's back, Daddy. Kurt Angle sidelined due to surgery. Kurt Angle told me earlier today he's healed, he's ready to go, he's ready to compete. But he truly believes, and he said this more than once in our conversation, he said, look, Eric Young, I've been watching what he's doing, and the man is a nutcase, and now they're on the outside amongst the fans here in Charlotte. The bearded terror, Eric Young, he's maniacal, as, as you said, he's a maniac, and he will destroy anyone whom he feels is lesser of a man, if you will, less of a man, if you will, than he is. And right now, he feels that Kurt Angle is less of a man, less of a less Eric of a Young thinks that he's got, he thinks that everyone is less than he is. Yeah. Ooh. That wasn't a good fall. A nasty spill there yeah. by Eric Young. And I, look, anything goes, no disqualifications, cool. But I think if you're Kurt Angle, keep it in the ring. Keep it inside the six-sided ring, and that's how you're gonna defeat Eric Young. You don't wanna be on the outside with this nut case. Uh, to your point, I understand what you're saying, but Kurt's no pushover, Kurt. And Kurt Angle! This isn't his first no DQ match. Anything goes match. Kurt has done it all. And if anybody can handle himself on the outside of the ring, it's Kurt Angle as well. Eric Young knew that a second suplex was coming, made his way over to the ropes to hang on. But Kurt can go overhead, belly to belly, with the best of them. And Eric Young driven to the outside yet again by Kurt Angle. And Angle is fired up. How good does Kurt look? We haven't seen him in a while, and, and I was expecting maybe there'll be a little ring rust. Maybe, you know, there'll be a little cardiovascular issues. But Kurt, hey, he's looking great, man. Eric Young trying to put a stop to the offense by Kurt Angle. That's what you can't let Kurt Angle do, get into his game, get into a rhythm, and start throwing you around with all those suplexes. He's a cyborg, and once he gets going, uh, it's hard to slow him down, if that's possible. Eric Young sent for the ride, and Eric Young, pile driver on Kurt oh, Angle's no. surgically repaired neck. No. And you just knew that Eric Young was waiting for his opportunity to pile drive Kurt Angle. Oh, that's, that's just not, yeah, Kurt might be hurt here. Kurt Angle writhing in pain on the outside. And uh, Kurt Angle's. Hey, we got, yeah, somebody needs to come out and check. This is just clutching at his neck here. There you see uh, medical personnel. Look, Kurt Angle may have come back too soon. I mean, you have to understand that the power driver, the type of maneuver that it is, especially uh, when carried out by one like Eric Young, I mean, he jumps with it as well. He doesn't just sit uh, like classic competitors have done through the years. He jumps up. We're going to take another look here, folks, Watch here. at the pile driver. And there, yeah, just like yeah. folks talking about the way that Eric Young delivered that pile driver. And these are necessary precautions taking place on the outside. Eric Young delivers a parallel driver with intent. And look at that, the doctor just called off the match. He can't continue. He's done. Being told that he can't continue, that he's done. Kurt Angle has, he's gone public with his plans for his future. And 
I think, look, I think this is a good call. Yeah, it was just an unfortunate scenario here. Unfortunate position for Kurt to be in. Uh, we know he's a competitor. He doesn't like to uh, say no. He well, it's a good like sign to, to see Kurt on his feet, right. though. He didn't want to be stretched out. He didn't want to be up. Look, Kurt Angle wants to oh walk God, out. Look, behind, behind, behind. Oh, Pat Kenny Trump. What is... He just, that's a, that's a doctor. What is he doing? This bloodthirsty lunatic. Oh, get out of here. Medical staff and personnel said that Kurt Angle could not continue. What an embarrassment this is to Impact Wrestling. Eric Young just attacked uh, physician. And Kurt is saying, hey, it's, it's done. Somebody, somebody else has got to come out here. I, I hope people understand. Kurt has said, hey, man, you know, back off. Like, he's hurt. Look, he's... Kurt Angle was saying, Eric, it's over. Yeah, he's, yeah, it's done. They said it's done. They said I can't continue. And... Oh, Lord. You know, when Kurt Angle said anything goes, no disqualifications, I mean, that's all, that's, that, that, that's part of the show, folks. Yeah. I, I mean, quite honestly, and this is oh just too much. Good grief. Good guacamole. I you know, like it was. Oh. It was anything goes. No disqualifications, but Eric Young has gone. He's gone too far. I uh, fix my monitor here. I'm, I'm, I'm just really. You know, I'm not going to sit here and call this. I don't a, know like how a wrestling to. match. Kurt Angle has said it's it's over. It's done. And er, this is assault. This, these are this is criminal. I mean, how do you how do you call this? I mean. Eric Young now taking the protective padding off the concrete floor here in Charlotte. And now Kurt Angle. Well, he, can't, he can't go anymore. <laughs> Oh, no. Somebody got to stop do this. Referee, step in. You want to step in? I mean, Eric Young was just standing right here. Kurt Angle valiantly trying to fight through here. And Kurt Angle with a German suplex. Kurt Angle perhaps going into defense mode. Perhaps, perhaps. Kurt Angle just reached way down and just freaking souffled Eric Young. You know, that word doesn't do justice to what Kurt Angle just did. Kurt is trying to continue, partner. He's trying to continue. Well, Kurt Angle saw an opening. He's going for a cover here. He's going to try to defeat Eric Young as we take another look here at what Kurt Angle just did on the outside. It looked as if the end was near, and then Kurt Angle able to turn things around and deliver the German suplex, but back inside the ring, Eric Young has turned things around. We don't know how much damage has been done to Kurt Angle here. Well, why was, why was Eric Young able to turn around so quickly? Well, if you notice when Kurt hit the suplex, I'm sure he wasn't aiming for that mat that was flipped on top of the other mat, which gave some padding, but fortunately enough for Eric Young, he landed on a double padded mat, and right now he's back up. It didn't do the damage that maybe Kurt Even was so, over. I mean, I'm looking over at this mat here. I know. It's not six in, and it's nothing. He was German suplex, basically on concrete out here. And Eric Young, and why doesn't he try to end this match? If that's what this still is, why doesn't he try to end it? Why doesn't Eric Young pin Kurt Angle? Eric Young doesn't want to end the match. He wants to end Kurt. Kurt's career. Good for Kurt Angle, German suplex. And Kurt Angle is trying with everything in his being to defeat Eric Young. A trifecta of German suplexes. But how much has this taken out of Kurt? You can see Kurt Angle looking for the angle slam here. Connects to Eric Young. Kurt Angle into the cover. Hooks the leg and Eric Young kicks out at two. Amazing. 
Amazing is the only word that Pope can think of right now to describe the cyborg that is Kurt Angle. Just amazing. How Kurt Angle is still going is an anomaly. And Angle got caught there by Eric Young. You can see a sense of urgency by oh, Kurt Angle, and he goes shoulder first off the steel post. And again, even when you hit your shoulder, you have a surgically repaired neck. See, Ooh, such as what Kurt Angle has, you're going to feel it. It's going to send shockwaves down the spine. The question right now is how much more of this can Kurt Angle take? And why hasn't Eric Young tried to end the match? Because he wants to end Kurt's the career. There's the elbow, and now Eric Young can go for the. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I can't. You're right. Just, just pin the man. Just end this. Oh, oh come! Oh, come on, Eric! Oh, this, this is just dastardly. Eric Young wants to make headlines at the expense of Kurt Angle. Uh, look. If he hits this off top of the rope, which Pope is thinking right now, he's going to go for that flying elbow drop. Oh! That's it. Devastating. Just, just be done with it. Kurt, Kurt is Angle. limp. And he's down. There's the cover. And Kurt Angle kicks out. There's hope. Listen to the fans. There, there's hope. Eric Young went for his first cover of the match. Thought he had done enough, and Kurt Angle. I got a feeling if Kurt Angle's doctor was ringside, somebody would be throwing in a towel. Kurt Angle continues to fight on. Look, oh. look, look at that. Look at that. Angle again clutching at his neck, trying to protect himself. Eric Young, what does this man have in mind now? I, what's going on? What is it? What is it? Oh, no, oh, no. no. Oh, no. Oh, no. You can't do this. No, no, no. You can't do this. Kurt Angle lands on his feet. And Kurt Angle, the ankle lock. The ankle lock by the cyborg. How long has it been since we've seen this? Kurt Angle sensing, cinching it in. He Kurt Angle can't let go. He has a locked down. He great find the leg. Kurt Angle found a way to get Eric Young in the ankle lock. Tap out Eric Young. Look at Kurt now on his belly. He's just holding on to that ankle lock for Even if life. Eric Young reaches the bottom rope, Kurt doesn't have to break the hole. There's no disqualifications. He doesn't Can't have do to break. I don't I think Eric Young remembers that. I don't think he remembers. It got changed to no DQ. Back in the center of the ring. Kurt has to hold on because he knows if he does, EY, Eric Young has the chance to do it. Eric Young has Kurt Angle beat. He has to hold on to this. Kurt Angle knows that this is his chance. His chance to defeat Eric Young. Tap out. Tap out. Eric Young's trying to resist. And Eric Young has been defeated. You are no god, sir. Your winner, Kurt Angle. And a victory by Kurt Angle. Despite doctor's orders, Kurt Angle almost forced back into combat. He was forced back into competition by Eric Young. He delivered a German suplex. He fought on. And once he trapped the ankle, once he got the ankle lock, it was almost like Kurt Angle knew, if I don't get this guy right now, I'm not going to win this match. It was the prime opportunity, if you will, for Kurt Angle. And he knew Eric Young had Kurt Angle's number. Kurt Angle knew he had to hold on for dear life if he wanted to come out on top and put an end to this matchup. Kurt Angle with the victory. And here's how this one went down, folks. Kurt Angle showed signs of life, but that right there, that pile driver by Eric Young, 
as we thought. So they would have put out a lesser man, any other competitor, that could have been it. Kurt Angle was able to change and hit the suplex on the outside, but EY capitalized again with the elbow drops to the back of the head. Now, Eric Young did everything he could, and then look at Kurt Angle. So quick, rolls through ankle lock, and then Kurt Angle knew my window of opportunity is open. I got to seize the moment. I have to take advantage, and I can get Eric Young to tap out. Kurt Angle talked about Eric Young being his toughest opponent. Kurt Angle somehow, some way, finds a way to pick up the victory. Something that Kurt Angle has always been able to do. Where there's a will, there's a way. If Kurt Angle is breathing, he's going to live to fight another day. And he pulled it out here and showed just that. I, I thought it should have been over. I it, thought it was. Kurt Angle should have gone to the back and got looked at by medical personnel. And Eric Young does what he does. And Kurt Angle somehow finds a way to pick up the victory here at Bound for Glory. Tremendous return for Kurt Angle. And still to come is our main event for the World Championship, a triple threat match. I know you don't like to offer up predictions, but do you think we're going to see a new champion here tonight? The probability says yes. I believe that we're going to have a new champion right here tonight, Bound for Glory. That's a fearless prediction by yours truly, Paul. It's a uh, tremendous opportunity for the challengers here tonight. Matt Hardy in the heart of Hardy country yeah. and Drew Galloway as they get ready for tonight's World Championship main event. All I wanted to be is the world champion. This is my opportunity. He has overcome impossible odds. Running boot! Lashley's down, and Drew Galloway is number one contender! Vengeful assassins and would-be conquerors all for one shot at immortality. Everyone's always talked about Drew Galloway and potential. Tonight, that potential is realized when Drew Galloway becomes the world heavyweight champion. For Matt Hardy, it is his chance to prove to his family and the world he can stand alone as a champion. Charlotte is 100 miles down the road from where I live, from where I grew up. In this match at Marvel Glory, I am dedicating it to my son, Maxwell. And he'll be there in attendance. My wife's going to be there. My family, my friends are going to be there. It means everything to me. And on that night, I get the opportunity to achieve my dream. Alongside his brother, Jeff, Matt has triumphed over vicious wolf packs, Samoan wrecking machines, and legendary titans. But on his own, he has dangled in purgatory. Vindication invariably just out of reach. Although their paths have been different, their quest for championship gold has brought them to the same destination. The doorstep of Ethan Carter III. He has slayed legends, denizens of the dark, and idols from Olympus itself. Unbreakable. Unbreakable. Undisputed. Undisputed. Undefeated. 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 Unrivaled TNA World Heavyweight Champion. Here, now, and forever! Which one of these men are bound for glory? Tonight, it's Drew Galloway versus Matt Hardy versus TNA Heavyweight Champion Ethan Carter III with special guest referee Jeff Hardy. And the world is watching. It's time for the introduction, thankfully, for our special guest referee. assistant of EC3, EC3 Defiant decided to fire Jeff Hardy. Jeff Hardy quit. 
Either way you want to look at it, Jeff Hardy no longer under the employ of Ethan Carter III, and now Jeff Hardy's back, and he will be the special guest referee for our main event. He did say earlier that he's going to call this right down the middle. And you wouldn't expect nothing else? Oh, actually, maybe you would. The man got his brother in there, that man being Jeff Hardy. His brother, Matt Hardy, is in there. He has a 33% chance of winning tonight and coming out champion. But what does it mean now that Jeff Hardy has been inserted as a special guest referee? And Jeff Hardy loathes and has disdain yeah. for EC3. what you gotta love about Drew Galloway. He has earned all of his opportunities. After Team TNA defeated Team GFW, Dixie Carter, our president, gave the members of that team a tremendous opportunity to compete in a match where the winner would go on to challenge for the world championship here tonight at Bound for Glory. Drew Galloway would win that match. Drew Galloway would then have a tag team match with Matt Hardy. Galloway was put in a tough position. If they won that match, Matt Hardy would get in. Galloway could have thrown that match. He could have said, I don't want to win, but they did win. And it allowed Matt Hardy to be in the main event. Matt Hardy finds himself in the main event of Bound for Glory with an opportunity to become world champion. In that video package that was cut short, Matt Hardy said that he is dedicating tonight's match to his family. He's dedicating it to his newborn son, Maxwell, his wife, Remy Sky, his father, Gilbert, also known as the legend. They're all in attendance here tonight. Matt Hardy's never been world champion, and there you see Remy and the newborn Maxwell. Will Maxwell see his dad become world champion here tonight? Fourteen days. EC3 never been pinned, never submitted. He is the unconquerable. Tyrus won bound for gold earlier, and Tyrus told EC3, "I'm coming for the world championship, but I still got your back." EC3 has to trust Tyrus. Has to think in a forward direction has to trend in an upward direction if EC3 wants to overcome what seem like insurmountable odds here tonight. And those odds are quite simply this. The numbers, 33% chance of each competitor walking out as the TNA World Heavyweight Champion. But if you want to uh, uh, bet against all odds, if you will, there may be a 25% if you want to look at it that way, because now Jeff Hardy is in the mix. I'm going to talk all about your analytics after the introduction by JB. I don't think that EC3 has a 33% chance, a 25% chance. I don't think he has any chance. We'll talk about it after this. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is scheduled for one fall and is your Bound for Glory main event. A triple threat match for the TNA Heavyweight Championship of the World. When the bell rings, the man in charge, your special guest referee, Jeff Hardy. 
And now, live from the great state of North Carolina, it's your main event of the evening. Introducing first, standing in the corner to my left, weighing in at 252 pounds, and coming to us from Air Scotland. He is challenger number one, Drew Galloway. And now, introducing competitor number two, standing to my right, weighing in at 234 pounds tonight. He returns to his home state of North Carolina for a shot at the TNA Heavyweight Championship of the World, Matt Hardy. And now, standing to my right, accompanied to the ring by Tyrus, weighing in at 234 pounds from Boca Raton, Florida. He is the undefeated, undisputed TNA heavyweight champion of the world, Ethan Carter the third. E C three. Nobody does it better, folks. Great job by JB with the introductions. Sets the stage for a big fight feel. World Championship. EC3 against Matt Hardy and Drew Galloway. You can see EC3 holding that title above his head, looking at it right now. Uh, that could be the last time he holds it tonight, so he better take, take a very long and good look at it. And again, I have to go back to what Jeff Hardy said earlier tonight, that he will call the match right down the middle. First individual to gain pinfall or submission. Leaves his champion, and look, I'm a numbers guy. I like the way you ran it down, 33, 25, but with Jeff Hardy as the referee, with Matt Hardy here, with Drew Galloway in the prime of his career, EC3's back is against the wall, and his chances of retaining his champion. And Matt Hardy's saying that Tyrus tried to get involved, and what? I don't know, I, I didn't see anything either, did you? No, Matt Hardy stomped his, well, uh, Tyrus may have, tried to snatch at Matt Hardy's leg there. You know what? I didn't is? see it. I didn't see it happen. You know what this is? This is a little shenanigans, if you will. This is a little a little mind game right now that's that's been uh, instituted by Matt Hardy to his brother because he's the authority. And it worked. Jeff Hardy is throwing Tyrus out. Jeff Hardy has the authority as the referee of this matchup. And look, did you see Tyrus? The man down, so I was like, okay, I'm not gonna argue. Yeah, but EC3's last chip has been ejected from ringside. And the last chip, if you will, doesn't seem to care, because think about it. He won the bound for gold matchup. He has a future title shot. But I think if called to action, Tyrus would have come to the aid of EC3. We'll never know. Tyrus has been sent back to the showers. And EC3, he's got to be thrown off his game here. And Matt Hardy going to work. Here comes Drew Galloway. And the matchup is off. Here we go. Made of it time, baby. They're already going at it. Drew Galloway and Matt Hardy working together here. And you want to talk about not knowing or believing about Pope's numbers? I think that, Matt, that you missed my point. EC3 has less of a chance than you're giving him already at, at a tremendous disadvantage. I think it's less than the number you put on it. And Matt Hardy eliminates the champion. Well, you know, back in my day, they called me Professor Vegas. So when when I talk about numbers, I understand. Schoolboy hit by Drew Galloway looking to capture the championship. 
EC3 has been champion for however many days you stay because you keep up with that. Ooh! Ooh that'll take the wins out of yourselves. But EC3 has been champion this long, and it's because he knows how to get the job done. Let's not take anything away from EC3. Where there's a will, there's a way. EC3 can still lead North Carolina, bow for glory, as the champion. EC3 doesn't have to be pinned or submitted in order to lose his championship. He's down on the outside right now. Matt Hardy and Drew Galloway. It's all about choosing your spot. Up on the second row here, side of Russian leg sweep. Drew Galloway is, again, as I mentioned, fought his way into this in EC3, not allowing Drew Galloway to get the cover on Matt Hardy. But just the Leonidas of TNA, Drew Galloway just headbutted him straight to the side of the face. And if EC3 is smart, hey, sit back, man. Let these two go at it and just get in right when you need to. Don't let that title leave your grasp. And Matt Hardy, neck breaker on Drew Galloway. That offense could come back to bite EC3, though, if he's down on the outside. And the decision is made inside the ring. If you get a quick roll up or you get a, a tap out of some sort, EC3 will lose his championship Agreed. and not be a part of it. Ooh. Agreed. But look where EC3 is right now. Just, hey, just covered by Matt Hardy and EC3 right there. That's what I'm talking about. Take a punch. Go down, EC3. Go down. Three way matches. The way that it, it works is the two prong attack. You have to get rid of somebody first. You got to get somebody down on the outside of the ring and then you can focus on the task at hand. Nice chop kick there by the world champion. Ducks the close on, and EC3 takes out Drew Galloway. There's the champ showing his abilities. Matching pair of drop kicks for each competitor, Matt Hardy and Drew Galloway. I almost feel like I might be cheering for you. I don't know. EC3 getting in the face of Jeff Hardy. I almost sound like you when it comes to EC3. Well, sometimes you just got to talk about the facts, and the, the facts of the situation are the situation that's EC3's in. I mean, the man did defeat Matt Hardy on his own. Their match at Full Metal Mayhem was incredible. EC3 has proven that he is a worthy world champion. Well, EC3 right now, Pope personally don't think that he wants to do this. With Drew Galloway, you don't want to get in what we call a chop fist, daddy. Here we go. Light him up, Leonidas. Get him. Drew Galloway trying to get the offense going here. EC3, unique offense of his own. Cover here on Galloway, hooks the leg, and Drew kicks out at two. This is when EC3 needs to go to work. Matt Hardy's down. If EC3 wants to retain here, try to put away Drew Galloway. Right. Couldn't have said it better, partner. And right now, EC3 didn't feel like it was the proper time, so he wants to weigh him down, if you will, applying the cravat. See the face of Drew Galloway turning near crimson. Well, you're not just cut off, cut off the blood supply, but you just wrench that neck when the cravat is applied. You know, we haven't talked about Jeff Hardy that much in this match, and I think that's okay. He's the referee. He's here to make sure that it's a fair match, and I think his counts have been on time. He's got a, you know, he's not a, a quick counting EC3 or anything. Crossbody in the center of the ring. Both competitors thinking the same thing. Their partner, Drew Calloway, came out on top, but just the sheer force caused him to roll off of EC3. Matt Hardy's back into the ring, and here comes Matt Hardy. Matt Hardy didn't expect to be in the main event of Bound for Glory. So you know he's just gonna really try to capitalize on him being placed in there with that nice leg drop. Cameron, North Carolina, as Matt mentioned earlier, about 100 miles down the road. Matt Hardy sizing up EC3 for the twist of fate. EC3 saw it coming. It takes Matt Hardy all the way to the outside. Not a great landing there for the champ. A oh, good counter, though. Yeah, absolutely, a great counter. Could have been over just like that. We know when Jeff Hardy or Matt Hardy, either one of the Hardy boys hit that twist of fate, is usually a done deal. And EC3 and Matt Hardy on the outside of the ring. Going Watch out these for two. Oh, and Jeff Galloway goes up and over. It's not too often that you see Drew Galloway flying over the top rope. Drew Galloway knows what's at stake here tonight, the World Championship. Matt Hardy got the worst of that as Drew Galloway at 252 pounds came up and over the top rope. 
as we take another look. Very impressive. Oh, by the big man. Drew Galloway almost a 20 pound weight advantage over his challengers here. Both Matt and EC3 came in at 234 pounds. Galloway 252. And EC3, he's got a table in hand. He's got cruel intentions on the mind. You mentioned about what's at hand here, the stakes, if you will, and I, it's not too often. I, I, how many big men in this business do you see fly like that? Drew Galloway is not a small guy. He's not an exhibition guy. Drew Galloway is, is a big time dude here, okay? He hovers over a lot of people, and to see him fly like that, it just shows you how bad he wants his TNA for a heavyweight title. We see three rearranging the hardware ringside. Has the table set up. Notice qualifications in a three-way match. EC3 trying to put away Drew Galloway here. He's in no rush. EC3's got all the confidence in the world. What is he thinking? Is he thinking power bomb through the table? Off the stairs? Drew Galloway trying to counter. Drew Galloway's got EC3 up. Oh no. Oh no. Drew Galloway has EC3 in a precarious oh, situation. It's not too often that things happen that makes Pope jump out of his chair. But being that I've been in that type of position, Pope has been in the ring, Pope has taken the stairs, that right there can eliminate EC3 out of this matchup for the rest of the, the time here. I mean, he may be done. And the crowd in Charlotte responding to Drew Galloway just driving EC3 back first into the steel steps. Took a lot out of Drew Galloway as well. He had all of EC3's weight on his back and drove him into the steps. Jeff Hardy there to the cover. Matt Hardy breaks it up at two. Trying to see if we can get a look at the back of EC3. How much bruising has to be on EC3 at this point. Drew Galloway has Matt Hardy. Matt Hardy counters. Here comes the world champion. Got caught by Matt Hardy. And Matt Hardy takes out both the champion and Drew Galloway. Nice inverted plus a DDT all at the same time. EC3 down. Drew Galloway down. Matt Hardy up. And you can hear that there, there is a cover. Oh! Drew Galloway was on top of EC3. Now Matt Hardy is on top of both the champion and Galloway. Uh, to your point, you know, Matt was going to the top. I think Jeff Hardy was paying attention to Matt Hardy. And and look, Jeff Hardy's not a referee by trade. Right. He didn't realize that Drew Galloway was on top of, of EC3. He was watching what Matt Hardy was doing. And Matt off of Jeff. Jeff caught. Right in the jaw there by Matt Hardy. Side effect. And Matt Hardy could be world champion right now. EC3's down. But so's our official Jeff back up. And now Matt Hardy, he can, he can pin Drew Galloway to become champion. Yeah, EC3 doesn't have to be pinned to lose his championship. Matt Hardy looking backslide on Galloway, stacked up on his shoulders, rolls throughout at two. Galloway hangs on, future shock DDT. That is it if he can get the cover, but EC3 is going to steal it. How wise, how smart, cover EC3. Galloway to the outside, and EC3 is going to retain his title. Matt Hardy just kicked out at two. And Jeff Hardy was right there to count to three should Matt have not kicked out. But but wait a minute here. Now Pope's just paying attention. EC. EC3 should have no gripe here. Hold on. EC3 should have no gripe. Jeff Hardy just actually helped him out because that was not your standard referee count. And as you mentioned, Jeff is not a trained referee. That count was a little fast, so EC3 should be appreciative to Jeff Hardy's count. I don't know. Oh, yeah, Daddy. I'm not sure I'm buying that, but... Well, you haven't been in the ring. Pope has, and I'm telling you. You're EC3... It's all about the cadence. That's Drew Galloway here on the table. 
And remember, this is what EC3 was trying to do to Galloway earlier. EC3 paid the price for that, too. Yeah, his back is looking a mess from what Drew Galloway did to him earlier. And now EC3, he's going to try to take out Matt Hardy and Drew Galloway with one suplex. Oh! Matt Hardy threw Drew through the table. Jeez Louise, what is going on? I'll tell you what's going on. Everything but the kitchen sink is falling out of the sky. These boys are letting it all hang out, Josh. Ah! And the man ah! in control is the world champion. Ah! A suplex. Matt Hardy over the top rope there and then crashes through Drew Galloway. And look at the landing that the champ himself took when he went straight to the floor, sacrificing his own body to save his championship. Drew Galloway can be forgotten about for the moment. EC3 has Matt Hardy right where he wants him. TKO delivered. EC3 into the cover, hooks the leg, Matt Hardy down, and Matt Hardy kicks out at two. Well, now that time the count was right on. That's what I'm talking about, a little bit different from what took place earlier when Jeff Hardy went in for the count. Matt Hardy able to kick out, able to stay alive in his quest to become world champion. EC3 is calling for the one percenter. EC3, against all odds, is looking to retain the world championship. Here comes Drew Galloway. How does Drew Galloway have anything left? I'll tell you how Drew Galloway has something left. It's because he's the Leonidas of TNA. There's a never say die attitude about Drew Galloway. If he's breathing, he's fighting. He's not going down. Chop, chop, chop away at EC3. Drew Galloway got caught by the clothesline there by Matt Hardy. You gotta have eyes in the back of your head in this type of matchup. Roll along in the clothesline. And Matt Hardy, lateral press on Galloway who kicks out at two. What a main event, Josh. What a main event we're experiencing right now. It's all about the TNA World Championship. Matt Hardy up and Drew Galloway plays defense. Great stop there by Drew. Drew Galloway right now has to find a way to take his focus, channel that emotion, because we know that Drew Galloway is an emotional competitor. Sometimes he let his emotion get the best of him. Right now, he needs to just slow it down a little bit, focus, and get his mindset together. Well, Drew Galloway may try to take advantage of a situation here. Remember, Matt Hardy went up top. Not sure where Matt Hardy was going to go with that offense, but Drew Galloway saw an opportunity. And now Matt Hardy. Oh, wow. Drew Galloway tied up in the tree of woe. Here comes EC3. Oh! <laughs> oh, man, that, that has to hurt. Everybody at home knows what that feels like. Josh, you know what that feels like. Drew Galloway in trouble here. He's hanging upside down as he watches EC3 and Matt Hardy now. Matt Hardy and EC3 jockeying for position. This is not going to Galloway! What core strength by Drew Galloway! That's what Pope was talking about, never say die. Much like the slogan, if you will, of Matt Hardy. He won't go away. Drew Galloway will fight with his last breath. You heard what the man said in the promo. He's willing to give his life for this title. So that means that he's going to lay it all out. He's going to do whatever it takes to come out on top. Both challengers and the champion down. EC3 starting to stir, as is Drew Galloway and Matt Hardy, who will make it back to their feet first. It'll be very telling. And EC3, Matt Hardy. And now Drew Galloway will get involved in the mix. What a fight this has been. What a battle this has been. Yeah. 
Oh boy, those things sting. They sting and hurt like hell. And now and Matt and Drew can go after each other. Land it all on the line for the TNA World Championship. Neither man falls. EC3, double one percenter. EC3 is going to retain his title. Galloway down, and Drew Galloway somehow kicks out at two. EC3 doesn't miss a beat. Goes for the cover on Matt Hardy, who escapes at two as well. Kudos to Jeff Hardy. Cadence is just on point right now. You know, maybe in the beginning it was a little beginner's thing. Uh, first time doing it. Who knows? But right now, Jeff Hardy is calling it straight down the middle, like you said, partner. Jeff Hardy said he would call it straight down the middle, and he's been doing that. And now EC3 is putting his hand on the official. You know, that's just history. I don't understand what EC3 is doing right now. That's just history. That's right, just hold on, hold on a second. Uh -huh. DQ me. Oh, you see what's going on. DQ! Throw it out! EC3 wants the match to be thrown out. Fight! There's no DQ though, right? There's no disqualifications. EC3, I think what's going on here, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think EC3 realized that after those double one percenters, he might not have anything left. He might not be able to defeat either Drew Galloway or or Matt Hardy. But it's simple, and, and you are right, partner, but EC3 was just trying to do whatever it takes to maintain his championship, and we know that with a disqualification, the title doesn't change. His blood's on your head! No way, man. Finish it like a man. Jeff Hardy said you need to finish this like a man. Yeah, but now Jeff Hardy's emotions is taking the, getting the best of him right now because it's a no DQ match, so why would he stop EC3? EC3 has lost his mind. Ooh, okay. And Jeff Hardy! Jeff Hardy's the, the official in this match. Drew Galloway running boot. And twist of Hardy. Twist of fate. Matt Hardy's got Drew Galloway down. And Matt Hardy has become world champion. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the match and new TNA heavyweight champion of the world. time in his career, Matt Hardy has become TNA World Champion. What a great way to cap off Bound for Glory. The boy from Cameron, North Carolina, with his family, his baby, if you will, his daddy, daddy and his wife, they're all here to witness and celebrate this monumental moment for Matt Hardy. Matt Hardy dedicated tonight to his wife, Rebby, to their newborn son, Maxwell. Matt Hardy, his odyssey, his quest to become world champion comes true tonight. And that's Matt Hardy's father, Matt and Jeff's dad, Gilbert, known as the legend around these parts. All right, so we're gonna have to take off the rope or something. Let's get the man in the ring. Help him celebrate with his sons. EC3 leaves defeated. And Matt Hardy is world champion. And bound for glory in Charlotte in Hardy Country. A proud moment on an incredible night.
Whoa! Whoa! That's the locker room area, ladies and gentlemen. That is right outside of, of where you see the guys come out. That was TNA executive John Gaborik, vice president of talent relations, and he was just shoved by EC3, and EC3 was screaming at TNA president Dixie Carter. I'm not sure we were supposed to see that. I don't know. But he's not happy with MP right now. Obviously, he was screaming something. Whatever, we don't know what he was saying, but he's not happy. Celebration continues inside the ring here at the conclusion of Bound for Glory. A feel-good moment. Matt Hardy is finally world champion. EC3, his title is gone. 714 days is over. Couldn't have written it any better. Taking place here in Charlotte, North Carolina, with Jeff Hardy as the special guest referee. We can finally say Matt Hardy is world champ.